Hey Lori Baya, welcome to on? session two of Dungeons and Dragons, upstarting the monolith with the, the team here. Um, so I, I guess I'll introduce him. We in order on the bottom of roll twenty. That's probably easiest to do. We got a uh, Laura by a uh, or Laura Thana, not Laurantha as I was calling it last time, being played by Minty. We got a uh, Lyrian being played by Torchy. We got Lionel being played by Oh, I'm Lionel Sunmane. <laughs> Nicolette. I'm played by a stupid little kid! Um, Benelvi being played by Bunny, and Roland being played by a bum? And wait, when did Adam's name in Discord change to a bum? <laughs> <laughs> he is now a bum. You know, Hello, you know. I'm a bum. <laughs> <laughs> Roland you know, is a bum. I'm just a random bum that they found on the street. Um, you know, Adam couldn't make it. We hired him in order to do stuff a little better. We are a little unorganized as is, I'm afraid. Also, how's my improvement of my microphone quality? That is amazing. And I guess uh, our other player can't make it. To... Actually, they haven't made a character sheet yet. They might not be playing. So, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, at this point, I don't think so. Still. I don't want a leader sheet. I'm going to give her the option to join if she ever can, but hey. Whatever, and I guess Jen's not going to be, or she might join in halfway through the session if she wants to listen in, depending on where she is right now. So, last time you guys fought, uh, actually I can bring you guys over to the field, I believe, as, where the, actually, I, have, uh, I have to manually go Pokemon over on both Pokemon. screens, because I'm using two monitors for this. So you guys are over in the, the field, and um, here you are in the field. This you're just, you're just off the path where you killed the ooze that devoured two of you, and then I uh, spit you back out, but... You're, you're going to continue on your quest towards what is uh, Kyonghai, but your first stop, your your pit stop, will be um, Destalude, which is like the little bit of a halfway point between the uh, the two. Not really, but it kind of is the closest thing to a halfway point, and I believe... Actually, I'm going to bring myself back over the map quickly. I want to measure the distance from the Eurasia to um, the t Destalude. It was about 100 miles, and how fast did we say you are traveling? I can't remember. Oh boy. The speed of light. I think it was... That's pretty fast. You're traveling 24 miles a day or something like that. So, it's been about Jeez. one day. You, you know, so. you, we'll say, just for some pussy's sake, overnight, you know, you spent your night. You got about 24 miles in. It's about another... Uh, well, we're going to round it up to 25. And um, we're going to say it takes you another little bit. No, maybe another three days until it looks like you'll be arriving in Destalude. So, um, your second day, nothing quite extraordinary happens. It's just, a, it's just a long day of walking, but you do get to actually try out your, your haver, not your haver sack, your, uh, your spice sack. Get some nice tasty food out of it between your hard tack and your rations. If whoever's take, keeping track of that can, I'm not gonna keep too much track of that because you have so much food that I'm not worried about it. Uh, I said you're going through a, a, pound, a like certain amount of food each day. By the way, so, you guys did level up after beating that ooze, so you're much stronger than you were the day before. You're in what? Huh? You guys, wait, what? Oh, you guys are, are level 2 by now, so... Oh, no. Oh, wait, we are. Yeah, you leveled up after being the ooze, so I hope everyone leveled up, because the, the, the encounters this session will be a little bit harder. And what I forgot to mention I is that... I remember I did. I think your, your thing says Blade Singer, too, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, mine does it. Because you went Blade Singer, that's our wizard is now a Blade Singer. So, uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is from this point forward, the encounters are going to be much, much harder. If you make dumb decisions past this point, you are likely to die. So don't be stupid; you won't die. Which is always. Um, that that's basically what it is. There's a lot of stuff here that can be um, TPKing you. Oh, are you guys good, or are you guys going to hearing cutouts and stuff? I'm hearing a lot of cutouts. Uh, I hear no cutouts. I can Someone disconnect or reconnect if you want me to. I've been having worse. That was me. I had to re leave and rejoin. I've been having worse internet lately. I don't know what's up, but. What's up, danger? Oof. I don't have to tell you. If you want us to leave and rejoin, we can quickly. Nah, you're, you're good. If I'll just have to ask you to repeat sometimes, probably. Okay, that's fine. So, like I said, just don't be stupid. You won't die. So, we're going to say you, you finish your second day. And your third day rolls around. You suspect by tomorrow you're going to actually be arriving in Destalude, once and for all. It's a long, long few days of travel, with uh, Lyrium kind of slowly trotting ahead because she's a little bit faster than you guys. 
and then realizing, oh, I'm far ahead, she waits for you guys to catch up after she gets about, you know, a good couple hundred feet ahead of you. Um, and then you finally, on the third day, a, an adventurer uh, kind of crosses your path. Now, I don't have just someone for this adventure because I forgot about putting their, their thing on here, so we'll just use um, this one. And um, this person is kind of just walking towards you as you guys are on the path. Oh and my God. <laughs> <laughs> are we gonna fight him? No, 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 no. Greetings, traveler. So where are you headed to today? He says, "Oh, I'm just heading back to um, uh, Horatia." And as as he takes off his hood, you realize that it's a pallid elf, which is basically like this. This isn't a pallid elf picture right here, but a pallid elf is like the. It's like the opposite Wait. of a drow. They are... Wait, I, I know that profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't have. I forgot to put their picture up on here, and this is the only hooded person I had up on roll twenty. So. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. It's not. Oh, it's not who you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you people who don't know, this is the uh, profile picture that was used for Charles Makovic, who was basically like in the same world. This guy's basically like. A demigod at this point because he's just he was such an idiotic character that ascended the way he did so but uh, yes he's literally the only person on here discuss hearing. more in episode one and two of the podcast yeah if you want to go back to listen to the podcast that which we might get back to at some point uh there is some more um backstory about charles there so um charles is event not charles blah this half elf <laughs> this pallet elf it's not charles Charles is a human. See, here's the thing. If you show us the picture, we're going to keep thinking it's Charles. I know, and that's... Don't worry. He'll say, I'm just head to Erasia. Oh, so you? Um, I, I was actually just attacked by some, some giant skeleton. It, um, it really did a number on me. Uh, I lost my bag back there, but I'm going to try my hardest to get back to Erasia because those, those people near Destilude, they were, um... I don't think I'm gonna be able to save them myself alone. I don't have any gear, so good luck to you guys. But I need to be on my way because that that skeleton really took a number on my supplies. Before you head off, could you give us more information about the skeleton? Um, let me recall. It was um a big, big skeleton. It was at least ten feet tall. Um, it's. I mean, it was a skeleton, that's of course. Its head looked somewhat like that of a bull. Um, it had a giant great axe. It's about really all I could tell you. But it was hanging right outside of Destiny. It is about a few hours' travel towards the city. Uh, well, what you is say you need to, city? You say you were uh, working on assisting the city of Destilude. Uh Before I continue speaking, Torchy, that's where we're headed, right? Yes. We happen to be heading there ourselves in order to see what we can do to help. Any information you can give us, or if if you uh, are in need of allies, uh, please give us any information you can. Give us any info now, or forever hold your peace. Um, give us info now, or forever hold your peace. He, he's going to say, he's going to puzzle and say, well, what kind of information are you looking for? Information on the beast or information on Destilude? Both. Um, how I, much I say both. do you know about Destilude? That's the easy of the two to describe. Okay, do you know about Destilude? I'm just fishing with my uh, dice here, guys. I'm sorry, I just have to get some dice out in case I need to roll anything that can't be seen on roll 20. Not for what I'm seeing in my back. So, he'll tell you that Desolude, unlike most cities, is a city that's founded by scale, scale folk, he'll call them. Um, scale folk are the races like your dragonborns, your lizard folk, your kobolds, your Yawanti purebloods. Alright, um, y'all ready for me to kill another kobold? They're not necessarily evil, but they, they do have to, they all take refuge with each other because of the fact that sometimes they are seen as evil. Um, there is a man there, his name is Tabal. He is a uh, blue dragonborn. If you meet with him, I'm sure he will give you much more information about the society. I was just sent out here on a contract to um, 
basically deliver some supplies and if I ran into any um, monsters along the way, try to exterminate them. But the fact is I could not exterminate this monster. It was too big of a threat for myself. I'm just a low-level adventurer for one of the guilds in the town. I see. Well, we wish you safe journeys uh, to where you're headed. Horatia. Thank you for the information you've given us. Here's you sell you. Be careful because, like I said, it'll sneak up on you. You can't even hear it. It'll just come out of the bushes, and next thing you know, you'll be. It'll it'll hit it'll hit you, and if you're like lucky like me, it'll only take off your backpack. But if you're if you're unlucky, it'll it might slice off an arm or something. I don't see a problem with that. Okay, well, all right. Best of all luck right. to you. All right, other mighty morphin Power Rangers, we might want to keep our eyes peeled in all directions from here he on out. Walks mm -hmm. past you, and he, he he waves all goodbye and says, "Best of luck." As he leaves stage left, stage right. He came from stage, stage left. Stage right. <laughs> <laughs> he goes back towards the. Our military. DM does not know left and right. <laughs> stage north. Uh, yeah, no, he just goes right back towards the monster. That'd be funny. And as, and as he walks away, you just hear from a distance. Oh. oh. I dropped a dice. Okay, I don't need my dice anymore. I die. I dropped a die. Listen, I'm I'm discombobulated tonight. Uh, I'm gonna put you guys. Actually, you guys are walking along the path. But I'm gonna put you like towards that side of the screen because you guys are going to be actually running amongst this, or running towards this beast. Um, you guys do know that it's only a few hours to the. I guess that'd be the west of you. So, I would reckon. I would recommend not recognize. I almost said recognize. Recognize. I would recommend organizing yourselves in a fighting formation so when you do run across it, you will be able to. Um, All right, guys. Time for me to be in it. the back. Oh, thank you for whoever drove through the path, but we don't really need the path to do too much. <laughs> um, who? I guess Lyrium would Lyrium. want to be up front. You and I be next to each next next in front. I yeah. should be towards the back. Actually, I yeah, should I'm, the other I'm two. Her. I'll be behind line. <laughs> uh, Roland, though you are a ranger right now, technically, well, you are a ranger, quote unquote, because technically the ranger you are using is a fighter that is a ranger subclass. You can be a frontliner in this much more efficiently than a normal ranger can be. So if you wanted to, you could frontline this pretty hard because you get all the normal fighter abilities. Plus ranger abilities, That's because that's the subclass you're going to be going down to third level. Uh, it's a custom subclass for everyone that, you know, was unaware that I do some stuff on DMs. You're a custom subclass. So, as you're kind of going and going, you're going to eventually, uh, everyone roll me a perception check. A what check? A perception, perception check. Roll me, roll them on I check. I am dumb. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Take the first one. In Lorathana, I understand sometimes you guys roll twice on accident. Uh, you no, guys specifically my mouse that just the... kind of hear bones clacking, and as you get a little oh, closer, sorry, that's me. I'm just cracking my knuckles. You slowly, <laughs> you slowly move, and you see at the end of the path, this, or you know, like uh, towards the end of the path, you see this giant minotaur skeleton. Hey guys, look, he's horny. Ha ha, funny joke. <laughs> funny joke over. So, what do you guys want to do? It doesn't see you yet, it hasn't noticed you yet. Uh, uh, I, uh... Yeah, what guys, is the likability? I, I, I hate to say it, but, uh... Of us going off the path. I and don't suggest we. Off. I don't suggest we uh, mess with that thing. Like we head off the path. And we Gee, head off. Lorthana, you're gonna have to be a bit quieter than that. Gee, I don't want. Isn't that right, Lorthana? As I yell, I'm getting. Isn't that right, Lorthana? <laughs> as you scream, the Minotaur puts his head up. To be fair, it doesn't have ears, so. I oh, mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> technically, it can't hear. Listen, listen, listen. If it comes to it, I will just firebolt spam, okay? 
them as I throw them. There's no stopping me. We have to be very sneaky. Okay, to be fair, this encounter is skilled properly, so don't worry about it too much. I would fail. So as Liam moves forward just a little bit, the Minotaur, you just kind of hear something rustling near in your direction. So it actually starts to wander over this way slowly to I investigate it. I was just here. Man, it's just mindless. I was joking. It doesn't have eyes either, but that means it can't see. Yeah, extra sense. Although in this case, it's like 30, 30th sense. Uh, I'm sorry because I am doing a chip because I'm hungry. As well, so. Does anybody want to agree with my proposal? Detect magic. Uh, yeah, you detect some necromancy going on, but that's about it. So, as he, the Minotaur skeleton is slowly approaching to kind of understand what made the sound. It's going to be about here by now, I must say. Oh my goodness. Um, what do you guys Okay, want I to do? am personally going off the fucking path. Can I move towards it? You can move towards it, uh, but if you move towards it and it gets basically to a close enough point, it's probably going to engage in combat with you. Even here? Uh, that is well within its line of sight. You're just barely out of it now because there's like a little hill between you and it, but you can see it because it's pretty tall. So here, but here. Um, I'm gonna go. Okay, yeah, no, I'm following Roland. Fuck you all. Um, can I look around for anything we can hide in? So, you're, oh, wait, you're hidden behind a right. small hill right now, because the, the path is like a little bit of a hill, like right here-ish. Right? Well, but, I, I use this guy's self into a rock. I don't know if that works. <laughs> Alright, I... I mean, wait! It was, it was worth a shot, okay. No, you can't change your body type. So yeah, you have to have limbs. So I can change into a rabbit. What? No, because ha you can't be less than a foot small. So you can be one giant rabbit. <laughs> oh, so I have to be my size, basically. You have to. You can't be more than one foot smaller than yourself. I oh, guess you can be any bigger than you want to. Go off into. Oh, I know you can't. You can be one foot shorter path. or taller. Sorry, I mis I misread that. Wait. So in other words, you're telling me I can also be that thing in front of it? No, you can't be, because you have to be within a foot. Oh. Eh. Uh, see, I'm just gonna... <laughs> so everyone goes off path. No, 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 no. You guys can't just wiggle yourself out of that that much. Everyone who goes oh. off path, make me a stealth check, because now you're going into high grass. I'm gonna get lost. I'm gonna tell you now. Oh fuck! <laughs> Thinking that we were rounding because he moved forward. Roland, you also need to make me a stealth check. Cause you're, if you're heading into tall stealth. grass, everyone that's going off path and heading into the tall grass needs to make a stealth check. Cause they make a lot more noise. I ain't going yet. I ain't Kay. going yet. So. Roland enters the tall grass first. I'm just gonna say because this is thematically be correct. He doesn't really make much noise, so Lionel thinks, Oh, I can do that too. He steps like on the on a giant branch, and the Minotaur immediately is like, Hmm, I'm gonna go over you to this said, hill. You said it didn't have ears. ears. No, it it, it, ears. it it has to hear somehow, because it needs to, you know, it, if, if it doesn't have ears, it, doesn't, it also doesn't have eyes. Quick, it's chopped That was a joke. <laughs> so it's going to move its movement speed. So that would be... Oh, guess it's time to roll initiative. So it gets on top of the hill about right here. I think that's about where it was. So and it sees you guys. It's very surprised. <laughs> now everyone roll initiative. God damn it. Including me, even though I'm not in uh, combat, basically. Technically, yeah. though, you're not in combat. Oh, wait, let me, um, actually, everyone that rolled Why initiative. Why am I first? Wait, no, Bunny's first. Never mind, I'm good. Um, this I is, forgot this to is clear old, initiative. This is old one. Yeah, so everyone just re oh. it'll, it'll redo your things for you though, so you're fine if you just redo it. I so, already, I already rolled. Yeah, so yeah, uh, the lyrium roll, lyrium rolled, bunny rolled. So I need. I you did not to roll. roll. And I need. Why is the wizard going first? <laughs> oh, okay, good. Okay. Yep. 
Right. Oh my god, that 28. Good, so here good, we go good. with uh, Roland right. going first against this. Uh, it rolled a nat 1. But I'm technically so not in combat. Technically, it is your turn. Useless first turn ever. <laughs> it doesn't know where you are. I'm though. just gonna. I'm gonna stay here. I'm going to. Uh, can I look? Can I look for weakness? Um, you can try to. Uh, what would that be? Um, so what are your abilities? I don't think you have really anything that's like a ranger ranger ability right now. Um, no. So for your abilities, I'm just gonna say that if you want to look for a weakness, do me a investigation check. Investigation? Yes. Please, 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 shit. Okay. So as you see, it's made out of bones. And you know, bones are sometimes brittle, but they're also sometimes hard. Jesus um, you, you're not really going to figure out that it's um, necessarily like, vulnerable to anything. But you do imagine that since it's a skeleton, it might not be like be able to be poisoned or something that would have to deal with its blood. So you kind of get the opposite okay. of what you're looking for. Okay. Also, maybe piercing wouldn't work as well on it because you know if you you can't really pierce bone, that kind of stuff. Hey, you can pierce whatever you want if you really try. Um, oh wait, maybe I'm just thinking about in bed. Laura's turn. What does Laura want what? to do? <laughs> I mean, what? 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 <laughs> Unless you want to do anything else, roll. And I'm sorry, I forgot to ask if there's anything else you uh, want to do. Um. No. no. Okay. Laura, use ice beam. So you, you basically stick out your hand and a ray of frost comes out of it, and it uh, yes. it hits it pretty good. Use ice beam. It looks a little bit chilled. Does ray of frost do anything else after that? I think that's all it does. Am I right? That's all it does. Yeah. Just some damage. Okay. Just some damage. Small little damage. Is that gonna be all you do? I know you took your movement all right. We didn't take all of it. If you want to take a little bit more, you can. Well, I'm gonna. Uh. uh Go right here. Okay. I'm a squirrel. Lyrium's turn. I think Torchy's AFK. Um, okay. Well, I just forgot it was me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna... I mean, I used ice cream. Come on, use. Oh, so you take your so you enter rage, I guess, right? Yes. So you, you rage and you you take your hand axe and you're like ah and you just chuck it at it. <laughs> it gets some pretty good stuff to it. And it sinks right into its rib cage, like between like several bones, and it maybe even it smacks through some of them too. It's like you see as it like it lands in its rib cage, it shatters the bone and it falls right back out through its ribs, doing an impressive thirteen damage to it. Brings it down to that much health. Okay, uh, the Torchy. The Torchy. Um, you're gonna oh, have you to, um, uh, roll an issue again. Um, I don't know where it happened. Um, no, it's because my. my oh, I'm gonna look at what, uh, Lyrium did, and I'm gonna go. I don't know why you're thinking. My disappeared but my new button, no no my new button it's is literally button. just like last campaign oh but yeah you threw that so you're good i was gonna say you might have to move it to but you threw it so you're good okay lionel's turn oh he's oh, i just saw lyrium chuck a hand axe i went hey well, that's pretty cool and i'm gonna take one of my hand axes i'm gonna oh reach my between gosh. my gosh i'm gonna go hey bonehead and i'm just gonna chuck the hand axe at it um, yeah, not bad. Not you bad. don't get the crit, but you, you you chuck your hand axe at it. You you would have done just as much if you got the crit, but take your hand axe and you, you do a, a nice ten damage to it. God, it's being right before it even gets up to you guys. I learned from Thor. Aim for the head. And now True. we're talking about Banelby. What do you want to do? 
Oh, yeah. It's my turn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, wait, so I can attack it? Yeah. Oh. Um. Let me see. So... You're a bard, and it's your first time playing, so I'll help you out a little bit. If I can. Yee. Um. So you have a few options here. Um. Yeah. You could try to. Hmm. Oh, I'm not hits. close enough to stab it. But you can throw something at it, like your dagger or your hand. I can throw a dagger? Can you, I? you can throw a dagger at it if you want to. It won't do a lot of damage, but it'll do something. I have a hand axe. You can try throwing that as well. Oh, what the heck just happened? <laughs> a lot of your spells don't really work at range yet. Yeah. So, um... Can I just try to also, throw Are we gonna get quick? three hand axes in a row? Let's do it! Yeah! Let's... Do it three in a row. Hell yeah. How do I do? <laughs> um, so you click on the hand axe. In your, uh, like in your attacks and spells. Like the word hand axe. Ye. Oh. That doesn't... Oh. So yeah, you throw your hand axe. And you're thinking, oh. oh, they did really good. I can do this too. You realize that your arms are kind of weak. And as you go to throw it, it literally just, like lands a foot in the ground in front of you. And you're like, oh. You, I'm you not deal. as strong as the lion. One slashing damage to the ground. The earth tremors and an earthquake opens up. You're all swollen and alive. I'm oh, just joking well. about that. But you do you do, do one slashing oh. damage to the earth and the earth is very upset with you. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna let you pick your back your axe He's back up as a bonus. Save action if you the want earth, to. not kill the earth. God, I'm stop sorry. being such an American. I mean uh, why not? As a bonus action you can pick up the axe if you want to. Can I? You can pick up the axe, yes. Cool. Time to get Shrekt. Shrek. The Minotaur Skeleton's turn. It's gonna run up. It's gonna see Lyrium, because Lyrium did the most damage. Okay. And as okay. it runs up, it's going to actually charge. <gasps> right? And it's going to do... Um... Wait, how does this work? Try me, bitch. Okay, so it's it actually going trying. to gore you. It's going to try to gore you, at least. Um, what's your it, armor class? It, it's 17. Okay, so that actually misses. And, um... It did. And then hits, so it can't actually charge and gore you. So, it is now right on top of you, and that's really all it can do, because it missed and it messed up its gore. So, Roland's turn, then. Okay, I'm going to move... Here? Okay, because you're a wood elf. You I'm guessing I gotta do a stealth. Um, I mean, it knows you're there. Or is it just well, stealth to go in? It was literally just stealth to go into the grass and see if you can move around in it without making noise, so it didn't hear you. Okay. Um. Oh man, a rogue would have been nice in the tall. I can't do anything without because I like in my head I believe that piercing is not going to affect it because it's bone actually so... wait did anyone no okay well piercing could hurt it it's just that it's not going to be as effective because you might get stuck between the bones or something when you go to pierce you can try to do re-ascertain your suspicion because you know you didn't really get much out of your okay. suspicion last time may i attempt to shoot at one of the limbs like the connection of the bones. You can actually, yes. It'll be a little bit higher of okay. a of a uh, DC to hit, I guess. But or the AC for that area will be a little bit higher. But you can still hit it in general if you roll lower than the uh, the new AC assigned for the target of the limb. So where you is it a leg or an arm? Because that'll change the DC a bit. It will be a elbow joint area. Okay. That'll be about. Something in my head, okay. About something in my head. <laughs> well, I don't want to tell you guys what it no, is. You're... I want you guys to know it's AC. Your exactly. elbow, man. Your elbow. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say that adds like maybe a 3 to his armor class. Oh, you get hit anyway, so you actually sink your arrow right into his elbow. And it doesn't necessarily disconnect it because you know it's just an arrow in like a giant joint. But it, it looks like it lost a little bit of its um uh, motor in the... uh in the elbow. Okay. Um, 
See, I heard odor, but I had to translate it to motor in my head. <laughs> yeah. Same. <laughs> I, I said motor, I'm pretty sure, but if, if you... My it, turn, right? It's now Laura's turn, yes. Okay, I go 20 feet up here. Laura, use ember! <laughs> Fuck! So, <laughs> you shoot out this little ember towards it. And this little puff of my fire just appears in its face, and it's like, ah. And it was like mildly annoying, but it, uh, it uh, happened. Retreat! Okay, Lyrium's turn. It's moved up to you. What do you want to do? Ah, fuck you. So you take out your great axe, and you oh, deliver a nice blow right into its great axe. <laughs> no, you actually hit its arm. Say that you, you aim to dis disarm it or something like that, but you just barely missed, and you do a total of 16 damage, bringing it down to an astounding not much left. Yay. It's looking pretty tattered at this point. I'm gonna delete my character, Lionel. Didn't do it this time. <gasps> Me, well, where is it at? Okay, I'm going to go behind. Can I go here? Uh, to get advantage? Yes, you can. You'll have enough movement to do that. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I've got plenty. And I'm just going to... Hey, you! You're not a meathead. You're a bonehead. Or, I guess... <laughs> hey, you. You're no meathead. You're just a bonehead. Haha, <laughs> I'm so funny. It looks a little and sad I, as you say that. And I stab that. it. You stab it, and you do some good damage to it. it, it it's looking a little bit hurt still. It looks like it still has my, just the smallest. I think it was my jokes. I think it was my jokes more than the uh, actual axe that hurt it. I think um, you guys would realize at this point that it's not looking um, very healthy. Healthy. I think at this point, but um, it, it's not going to take much too much more to take it down. Vicious mockery. I mean, yeah, that makes sense, but he's not really. He's in multi classes in a bar, he'll know it. Yeah, um, no vicious mockery. It's time for our actual bard to do stuff, though. Mm. Can, can I stab it? Yeah, you, you can walk up and stab it if you want to. Can I stab it? In fact, if you move <laughs> to here, right, if you move to, to there, oh, I didn't mean to move you. Me. I was trying to, to drag it, but I had the wrong tool open on the wrong monitor. So if you, yes, were, if you were to move from there to there, you get advantage yeah. on it off of Lionel being there. So, so I stab, I stab dagger, 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 stab. So this size of a so, creature, we can take advantage off of. Okay. Yes. Uh, so okay. So he hits it. Um, so in official D and D rules, no, you can't. In my rules, yes, you can because theoretically it should be easier to hit a larger creature. Number one and number two. Let's just do some basic math here, right? And because it should be easier to hit a larger creature, that is flanking, and that is also flanking. Um, but not that or that. As long as you are in the same spot on the opposite side of it, it is flanking. So if you're here, it has to be here because there's no other possible opposite spot. Or same as for here. But for here, your opposite spots are both here and here. And then for here, it's here and here. There would be there okay. and there. And again, here would be here and here. Mio, we need the music. Oh, crap. I'm sorry. I forgot about that. I mean, Can it's not going to really I've matter. Painting. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, it's going to see Delirium, and it's not going to be able to really gore anybody at this point, so it's going to take its Great Axe to Delirium, because it hit him with her Great Axe. Oh, great. It's take its no Great Axe, and it's going to try to blow it right down Delirium, right in the, uh, the center, if possible, of the, the horse body. And it does nine Ow. slashing damage, and it takes its Great Axe Ow. and delivers a nice big blow into your back. Oh my back. Oh my back. <laughs> Rolling as it's basically falling apart at this point. What do you like to do? I am going to. Even though it doesn't really matter. Go here. Yee. And I am going to. Uh, do nothing. Okay. So yeah, you walk up to it and you, you, you attempt to, to hit it with your rake club. And you swing and you miss. Just so people know in my campaign, um, you wasted technically a little bit of movement there. It's not going to matter too, too much because you know you couldn't do anything else anyways. But, oh sorry, uh, doing this and then moving like that is viable and like that. 
So you can cut off 10 feet there if you wanted to. So you could have taken that with 25 feet if you wanted Only to. Only saved 5 feet there. Actually, sorry, that was not on my on my screen. You could do that like that, like that, like that. So you, you save a few feet. Sorry, I, I realize I have two monitors sometimes, so sometimes some stuff doesn't show up on one and doesn't show up on the other because of how I'm recording this, and I want you guys to see the, the viewers to see stat blocks and stuff because that makes it less immersive, although they can see the health, which is helpful for them. Okay, Lord Thana, your turn. Mm. Okay, well, um... Jeez, you're gonna run right into him? <laughs> you know what? Quarterstaff, go! Fuck! So if you take out your quarterstaff, and you, you see it as Roland takes out his quarterstaff and takes a little, nice little swing at it. So you're like, oh, no, nah, I'm going to show Roland up. I can do it too. And then you go to swing at it, and you miss. <laughs> you did it too, see? Yeah, we're trying to pull out yeah. my here. Lyrium. I'm doing a great job. All right, great axe, go. And you take up your great axe, but you have advantage. So as you're about to miss, you're like, no, and you just pop it in the face. And yeah, and it. It is. <laughs> it is deaded. Um. Can I? Can I? Wait. Eh. 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 eh dead. <laughs> can I like? Oh wait. There we go. It is deaded. It has been deaded. You guys have slain a, a minotaur. <gasps> I no damage. Believe it. Well, except for that great axe wherever it hit, uh, you know. So, uh, upon <laughs> killing this, this minotaur, you guys are like, wow, that was relatively easy. That pallet elf that we ran into earlier must have been an absolute you terrible adventurer. But then you realize he was alone, so maybe he, you know, can't be that harsh with him, because, you know, he said he was ambushed and stuff, but... Um, well, he was also by himself, so... Yeah. You realize you can't be too, too hard on him, but you, you realize, like, wow. It wasn't as hard as he said. And you, you feel a little sad for the guy because you realize... It's a real bruh moment, if you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, you feel a little sad for the guy, and uh, you're like, wow, if he had friends, maybe he wouldn't have been ambushed and lost his, his adventuring gear. But that's how the cookie crumbles. Traveling groups! So, okay, there's another that's... message, you guys, to remember, that things will be dangerous, and they could... Well, this was not actually, actually scaled to you guys, but if you don't act dumb, you won't die in the next few sessions. But once you get to, like, level something, like, level... Four or five, which won't be so squishy, so it won't matter anyways. And so um, we can be dumb at level four or five. At level four or five, you can be a little bit more dumb. Uh, I okay. would say maybe when you get to Kionkai, just from a GM's perspective, because I know what everything looks like. Then maybe, maybe you can be dumb after that. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know how the <laughs> difficulty of the campaign is going to scale. Or she kicks another door. Everyone dies. So, <laughs> actually, as you were heading out. It's basically, you're going to move on past this, uh, send this minotaur. There's nothing on this skeleton. You can see everything it has. Uh, Adam, if you want to, you can try to recover the arrow. Yeah, I'll recover. So roll me a survival check to recover it. Okay. So as you I try to rip out be... the arrow, it, it breaks in half, and you're like, damn. That was a good, damn good arrow, too. Yep, you were really upset. It was your prized arrow. And now you Down to 19. <laughs> Down to 19 arrows. And let me, um, just... Remove that. We can really find more arrows once we get to Destiny. Okay, cool. And I'm gonna just close it for now. Okay, cool. So, you guys are gonna move on past the centaur. It's a and at this point, or yeah, minotaur, not centaur. I mean, the centaur is starts lagging behind because it's been sliced in half. But you actually, the centaur is going to end up going up ahead again. I guess the Lionel is going to also be like right behind him. And uh, this is kind of the party arrangement. And along the road. You, you just keep on going, keep on going, and you run into, um, someone's, like, kind of walking towards you. Oh, God, is, another, is it another paladin? On the road. It's not not really another paladin, but this is, you're getting pretty close to death loot at this point, and the ground is starting to kind of change just a little dark. bit. Just... So, at this point, the ground is looking more like, uh, I didn't really do it, but the ground is looking more dead. I don't really have a way to show you guys that, other than... The ground isn't really green anymore. It's looking like the, the grass is starting to die and stuff. So as you can kind of s scroll in here. I'm going to scroll in for it because everyone else can't see it. But you see this nice dragonborn with wearing uh, some, some plate mail and some... Uh, actually, they're facing the wrong direction. Uh, but they're wearing plate mail and... Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I can't turn them around. How do I turn them around without, like... I guess I can't turn them around without putting them upside down. Did I kill it? Uh, yes, you uh, killed it. Hey, who's that person? Uh, this is a dragonborn that's wearing some purple... They're wearing, actually, like, purple, which is a very, very, uh, expensive colored, uh, dye for clothing. Especially in, like, medieval times. And it's a blue dragonborn walking towards you. They have a spear along their side. They're wearing some gold-plated armor. And they walk up to, towards you. And, uh, they say, oh, hello, travelers! Hello, what's... Are we looking for a blue dragonborn, though? We were, and that's the thing, is for some reason, I, like, the DM will tell me something I need to remember, and literally it will go one minute past, and I've already forgotten. Forgetfulness? Uh, roll me intelligence to see where you remember this from. I'm gonna roll nine and a half minutes. Bad Wait, you mean me? Oh, Just anybody who's trying to remember where this came from. That sums up my intelligence in real life right there. I mean... Okay. Borathana. Uh, and I guess Roland. Remember that... Oh yeah, yesterday. Remember that pallet elf we ran into that was suspiciously like a character from another campaign? Um, <laughs> <laughs> he said something about there was a, uh, a blue dragonborn named... Lorthana specifically remembers his name, named Tibble, or Tybal, that, um... Email. Tibble. No, Tibble's a better name. Tibble. Tybal. It's, it's spelled with a T-Y, so it's whatever you want to call it. I, I, I didn't make the name, I just generated it. I'm calling it Tibble. So, Tibble. Also, um, a word from our sponsors. Did you know the Great Channel is now unbanned? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the queen's going to open in, in the anime again. So, anyways, his name is Tibble, Tybble, Tubble, whatever you're going to call him. Tubbo. Tubbo. Yeah, there you go. Tubbo. Tubbo. Hey, Tubbo, how you doing? And he says... I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. <laughs> he says, hello, adventurers. <laughs> welcome, welcome. You seem, well, not all of you, but you, you, indeed, the centaur over there. You look quite tattered. What happened? You just, you just wake up and you just... Oh, it's your like, turn to roll fly here. Uh... Uh, what happened? <laughs> no he way, says, what he points at you and says, You look quite tattered. What happened to you guys? Oh, well, you see, a green axe came down on my back from the skeleton minute that we just fought. Oh, the, the, the Minotaur skeleton? Yes. By God, we've had a problem with that for forever now. Is it, is it dead? Yes. Oh, yes. I, I think, think it was dead, dead the entire dead. time, but it's not moving, if that's what you mean. Well, I mean, you are correct. I guess it was already dead. Huh. We should have just probably hired a cleric then. Anyways, well, thank you for getting rid of it. I sense the necromancy. Um, the area is under a very, very strange magical curse at the moment, so um, many of the monsters that die in the area get resurrected in, in some capacity. It's uh, very, very um, annoying for us that live here in Destiny to deal with, but... Um, hmm, that's pretty pog. Where are you guys... um? Heading to him, exactly. <laughs> I assume he's not heading Drink to the wasteland for no reason. Hold on, can I just use on there real quick? Hmm. Alright, uh, there we go. <laughs> Wait, what was the strength check for? Oh, um, no, I, I wanted to slap the lion over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think everyone does right now. <laughs> he, Even the lion wants to slap the lion. He's and At this point, I should mention, it's probably getting a little bit dark. So, Tibble is going to say, well... I am a, um, a citizen of Desolute, as you might say, but I am going, and you guys, he doesn't know that you know who he is yet. He says, well, I will suggest that uh, maybe we, uh, we camp out here tonight because moving through the wasteland at night is not favorable, and we are basically still in, just in the, uh, the Greenlands just a bit, so it'll be safer here than in, with inside the wasteland. Um, by the way, my name is Tibble. I am a, a citizen of Desolute, you might say. Are you another form of cat killer? Another form of what? Nothing. Okay, did you say cat killer? <laughs> no, I, don't hear about it. I, I don't kill cats, no. I mean, we don't really have cats. We have drakes. I, I, no, I said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay, well, anyways, would you guys like to camp for the night, or would you guys like to, um, uh, potentially just, uh, 
head on there and I can lead you there, but it might be a little bit hard because I don't really have dark vision and that kind of stuff. I want to heal my back. Well, you, you kind of have to rest to do that, I guess. So yes, I say we should camp out here for the night. Okay, so you guys camp out for the night. Well, I would tend to agree. You guys are camp out for the night then. Um, are you guys gonna talk to Tibble over the night, or are you guys gonna um? Yes. Kind of like want to do. I want some fish. I want more info. So okay. I want some fish. Okay then, Laura, you're gonna approach Tibble. What are you gonna ask Tibble about? Give me fish. I'm gonna Larry ask Tibble I'm like, fish. what's the history of Deathloop? You have fish. He's going to say, well. Dust loot has a very, very long history, and I must guess basically the people that want to cook can overhear this as they're making fish and hardtack with a little bit of spices. Thank but you. Um, essentially, as you guys are kind of cooking over the fire, Tibble tells you of his um his little story, and he says, "Well, dust loot used to be um much, much different. Um, dust loot it will used to be on the uh the northern part of the continent rather than the southern part of the continent, where we had a um." A dragon. I can't remember his name because I was not alive during his time. But he was a blue dragon. Um, and well, he uh, he and the other scale folk. Um, well, we 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 all lived in tandem. You know, he was our kind of like our patron. What in tarnation? Well, God what happened was was well, he um. One day he just was like, you know what? This might be my hoard and stuff, but um, you know. He, uh, he left it, and he wanted to basically conquer what is today Oratia, but to do so he needed to make a settlement, a military settlement, that was more in the south. Um, essentially, what happened was, uh, basically, how do I want to put this? Um, huh. Uh, essentially, what happened was, basically, a, a bunch of... Other monsters moved into the area, and he wanted us to have a home for ourselves, us scaled folk, um, after the fall of Nuertus to the, uh, the humans. And the elves and the, the dwarfs, the humanoid faction, I should say. So these other monsters came in. Corgan, he was our leader's name, that's now I remember, but, um, he wanted to, basically, us to have our own home. We moved south to Old Destlude, which is just supposed to be a military encampment, until we conquered Oratia. But, um, another dragon, a red dragon, uh, kind of stop that. And uh, we haven't seen Corgan since. Yeah, hey, what was the Red Dragon's name? Yeah, hey, what was uh, Red Dragon's name? Starts with a C, ends in an O, <laughs> has some alliteration in it. Oh, what's the name of that dragon? <laughs> Kokomo? No, no, it's not Kokomo. <laughs> Co Co chocolate? No, no, it's not chocolate. What's the name of that dragon? Coco, I think? I think it was Cockadoodle. That sounds about right. Yes, yes, Cockadoodle. Anyways, Cockadoodle um killed said well didn't kill him but he mortally wounded him and the siege of Horatia never happened then. Uh, ever since we've had a uh, a new leader kind of step in that we've uh, well they've they've kind of moved in more so than stepped in but um they are they are a little bit younger than our older leader and. I am what of, somewhat of an aid to them. I am one of the older... Well, I'm one of the few people that keep history in our settlements, so... That is uh, about the very, very abbreviated history of Destilude. I'd also like to point out, Cockadoodle doesn't even end in enough. <laughs> no, really? I didn't ask oh, you, but... did I? I'm... I just said we could go with it. Well, he is now confused between Coco and Cockadoodle. Um, Coco is the god, or the demigod, the dragon ascendant in this world. He was a red dragonborn that became a full dragon over centuries of research in the old world, so. Coco is a god that was technically created by a player partially, so. The god part wasn't created by the player, that was created after the campaign that Coco was in. So, that is just the lore behind Coco. There's a lot of gods in this world that, um aren't in the normal pantheon of the, uh, the Dungeon Dragons world, so if there's a god, I will have to basically bring it up for the viewers so they understand who the god is and why they are what they are. Has everyone got it? Yes. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming you're going to sleep for the night? Yes, I would like to sleep. 
Okay. When I sleep, I would like to have fish. I'm kidding. <laughs> so you um, you have a nice little rest. I'm not gonna make you guys rule for anything because nothing's planned to happen here. Um, you wake up. Tybal's up pretty early. He's up first. Um, who else is up after Tybal? Since I, I I'm going to say that I did not like take a long rest. I just went into a trance instead. Okay, so you're you're pretty early too. You're you're um, I, actually you probably get up before Tybal then. Um, Tybal's the next up after you because you only have to take a trance. And he would say, "Ah, oh, early rise." I see. I don't really. <laughs> I don't sleep that much anymore. You know. Well, why is that? None since the Battle of Twenty Eight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could say that. That wouldn't be inaccurate. Since some events in my past. Since the incident. Since, since my <laughs> wife. Like left several me. incidents. Since Twenty Eight. Anyways, uh, he, he, he understands, he says, oh, uh, I'm sorry, and, uh, for crying, and he just kind of goes back to, you know, getting himself ready for the day. The rest of the party, I guess, say they slowly wake up, and, uh, as they wake up, you know, everyone kind of gets together, they get their gear together. It's an okay. early rise. He says, if we move quickly, we can get to, well, Deathlude by noon, so I think we should be hurrying. Yes? No, I agree, but first... Let's eat some fish. Oh yes, I forgot. So you guys I can make some bomb fish. Just let me. Just guys... let me put some gunpowder in it. <laughs> you guys cook yeah, up some wait fish. Wait a okay. minute. Okay, let me just say, like everyone that we are going to freaking have meals with are going to freaking look at us like, what the flipping flopping is wrong with you guys? You guys keep on eating fish at every meal. <laughs> it's cheap. You got it for free, this... to be honest. So exactly. Yeah, but it's like. Oh, it's no, like well, no one no one yep. else that we, no one else that we confront will know that we got it for free. It's just going to be like, holy crap, these guys just. Well, I guess you have a giant sack of, of like fish on his on, um, yeah, on uh, Lyrium's back. So you're gonna assume that you probably just bought it in bulk, otherwise. Yeah, but like. Bought? Ha ha ha! Jeez. <laughs> so, again, you eat fish for breakfast because, why not? Fish and hardtack and spice. And it's yeah. healthy. You head off, and I'm gonna say you arrive in Deathlude by around noon. Let me bring you over to, to Deathlude. Uh, Deathlude, as you enter it, is basically just a factory. And um, at the end of the factory, well, um, you don't quite see. Are you guys in it or not? Uh, it looks more like an arena, man. Uh, don't worry, it's not an arena. Um, your your friend <laughs> um. He says, welcome to Destitlude, and he, he stands in front of them as you walk in, and you see yeah. basically along the sides of the city there's a bunch of dragonborns, kobolds, lizardfolk, and yuanti purebloods, as he described earlier. But he says, welcome to, um, to Destitlude, as you guys walk in, and he, he kind of runs right up to the, the side of the, uh, the figure in the back. Then, uh, well, thank you. Right there. Uh... <laughs> He says, well, what have Why you come here for? Why is my screen bugging out? My screen's just, like, doing shit. Okay, there we go. He says, well, what nice. have you guys come here for? We can, we, can, we can help you with anything. We must. Nice. Lyrium. Mm. Mm, what? Uh, also it's going? your backstory we're following. Yeah, but do I heal? Uh, yeah, you would have healed overnight. You would have taken a long rest, yes. Um, so, you guys would know, well, you guys would see this, but you would see that, um, the figure behind, uh, Lion, or yeah, Tabal, basically leans down towards him and whispers something into his ear, and he says, ah, of course, um, yes, this is our, uh, our leader, our steam leader, um, her name is Yui. She's quite young still, she's very nice. new to this, but, um, she is, uh, she's uh, essentially what our empress is right now. Also, is anyone else gonna drag the characters out? For now. It's a little hard for me to touch my computer right now, so, uh, unless I need to. They, yeah, you won't have to, you're really just doing more of a conversation here. Yeah, I was just asking. 
Yeah, I didn't even mean to drag mine out, honestly. You, you, it's better that you do, so you guys are roughly at the spot where you guys are. Well, I am here in assistance of Lyri uh, Lyrium. Lyrium is the one who knows most of the stuff in regards to this, because you're the one with the backstory and has the quest. <laughs> what am I supposed to be asking for again? Uh, well, you're more trying to, this is more of like a pit stop along the way to Kyonghai. But um, if you need to restock on supplies or anything, you probably want to do it here. Do we want to restock on anything? Well, we are on our way to Kyonghai, so... You say, oh, uh, of course. Well, that's what most people... We still got a little for. ways to go. Um, yes, yes, well, um, we'll be of any help if we can, but, um... Yui here says that, um, she senses something strange about the, uh, the five of you that have came here today. Oh, sorry, that's me. I have an erection. Wait a second, I'm kidding. <laughs> He, he says, he blushes as you says that, he says, oh, I didn't know you thought that way about me. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm not funny. I know. I just, I try to lighten the mood. Um, actually, I have one, uh, question a little unrelated to everything. So we may be looking to restock some. Do you have any shops around here? Uh, well, we don't really have shops more, so we just barter and trade if we can, but, um, some people in our civilization are sure to have certain items. What did you say? I was talking over you, I'm sorry. No, nothing. So, what, what kind of shops are they? Drugs? More of trading around. Do okay. you have anyone with some cocaine? I'm just kidding. Well, yes, of course, I mean, we'll indulge in we the good stuff here. We need to get places pretty fast. <laughs> well, actually, I have a crossbow, but I have no crossbow bolts, so considering that we're adventuring, it might be of use to... To actually make this crossbow be of use by picking up some bolts. Um, if anyone uh, yeah, might have some. Yes, yes, and he asks for like one of his people to come. Does anyone have crossbow bolts to be willing to trade for? And you see this, you want to there on forward and says, I do. Crossbow, some crossbow bolts and not. What would you be willing to pop for it for? And he says, maybe a silver piece or two. Oh, will happily do that. I'm gonna go over to go there. So. Well, He's not okay. How many it. crossbow bolts do you have? So he holds up a quiver. There's about thirty crossbow bolts in it. I'm probably really underballing that, but I'm not. I, I don't care at that point, um, really. I will hand you six silver for those. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Um, anything else you guys need to do before you go? Trying to add the crossbow bolts to my thing. Um, Not that I know of. Hmm? Not that I know of. He says, well... And he, as he says that, again, the dragon behind him goes down with written to his ear and says, Ah! I mean... If you want to, you can, but, um, I'm not sure if, um... I'm sorry, really, I don't really want to sleep with that. you. Sorry, what? <laughs> did so, not. You the dragon, talking. again, flies over him and flies, like, right up in front of you. Okay. And says, in this booming voice, it says, Hello, travelers. I am Yui, the patron of this civilization. As you can see, my skin is very sapphire. I'm a sapphire dragon. Now, my horde is not big, yet because I'm just but a young dragon, but I do see you guys have great potential, and I would like to maybe strike up a deal with you. Okay. You see, I am young enough to like, have started my horde, but not old enough that my horde has grown to the massive size of others. In exchange for maybe some information, or other things, I would maybe, or maybe even some, some wealth of your own, I would like to um, potentially, um, maybe, um, Strike up a deal with you guys so you guys can help me grow up my horde a bit. I'm listening. I know. Each of your darkest, well, not darkest, but deepest desires. I know what you all want, and I know what you want the most. What weapon you search for, you search for what kind of artifact that your, your, your mind wants and desires most to complete your quest in your future life. Or in the future of your life. I'm sorry, skipping over my words, but anyways, nonetheless. I would like to maybe ask if you'd like to strike a deal that I, if I give you information on where these um, 
artifacts are that maybe we split the profit per se when um you know you get the treasures that accompany them I'm clearly pondering this and thinking on it like a little a little confused but also like understanding and I kind of look over at the others see if they have any better reactions Apparently no one has any reactions. Cool. Nope. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, people, everybody else, like, I seem like I'm listening here. Like, uh, but his character is just fucking picking their ear. Um, like, I, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm processing. This. You like, are I'm, zoned I listen, out. But, like, you're zoned out. Lyrium is just out. like half you're asleep, and and <laughs> Laura is picking her nails. <laughs> He's basically asking for information on what a very very strong weapon you guys want when. You know, that you guys would desire. Each of you, each. He might not give you all of you right now, but he says basically in exchange for information on a weapon that you're all looking for, or that one of you is at least looking for, potentially that's very, very strong, that, um, he, as long as you get maybe, you know, some, he gets some of the gold back, he'll be willing to tell you where that is, or where she gets some of the gold back. So, so I can understand this better. At least one of us here is searching for a weapon, and in theory, when we find said weapon, there should also be some sort of treasure that is worth some value when, uh, when we find the weapon, and you wish for part of the, that money, correct? Well, not necessarily alongside the weapon, but along, along the journey, perhaps. Um, and not all weapons have this currency with them, but essentially any, mo any money that might be found in the same dungeon, I would like to just have a small cut of that, and basically as a... Uh, Basically, as payment for, you know, what this weapon is and where it's located, so I can grow my own horde a little bit. Well, I certainly understand that. At least I do not have a particular interest in being any sort of wealthy. I don't know about the rest of the group. So if we were to, if 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 traveling through dungeons does partake in a, in a large influx of cash, I'm not one to want to have my own sort of horde. So I would happily share. I cannot speak for everyone though. Any input from the rest of you? <laughs> Was that uh, Lurian? I'm typing, I'm typing stuff Christ. down, man. <laughs> I'm typing stuff down, dude! <laughs> uh... You don't like to type this as being recorded, by the way. I mean... Ah! I dropped dice. I know, but I'm taking my own notes. It's not necessarily gonna be hard to uh, go back and... I mean, I guess during a session it might be, it might be hard to go back and like read up on a... You know... What, uh, okay, uh, since when were we fighting the blue eyes white dragon? No, you're, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's oh, a God. young sapphire dragon in front of you. You're not fighting it. It looks like a blue eyes white dragon to me, okay? Did it, you just not get back? Yes. Oh my God, no wonder you weren't responding. We're trying to talk to you. Hex. It's basically. No, we're not hexing anyone. So oh, it, it's, it's gonna ask, <laughs> would, you, would you like to take up my deal or not? I, didn't, I wasn't even here for the deal, so... So it's going to reiterate, because you monkey brain, that it's going to say that um, basically it's asking for in, in exchange for information on what your deepest, darkest desires are, or not deepest, darkest, but just your deepest desire for like a weapon or a uh, some sort of artifact that will help you along your quest, as long as you like, it gets like a cut of the gold that you find along the way, it will give you information on where it is. That sounds like a deal. I'm in. Good, good. Anyone else on in on this deal or? Sure. No, I, I don't. Well, I, don't I myself do not have a particular problem with it. I don't mind, even though I don't know what the deal is. Well, if... hey, I'm not gonna lie. You're you, you seem to be a pretty cool dragon, so having you as a friend also seems pretty ideal. Like... Okay, so I guess looks it looks like everyone accepts it. So he says, "Well, I, I can't." Sorry, reveal... we're all. We're all simps. Would you like us to simp for you? Yes, no. of course, of course. <laughs> this is a female dragon. I'm a female, though. <laughs> simp for my son. <laughs> as long as it's a female, you're honestly you can simp Keep for going. me too, guys. Sweet comment down boy. below if That's you want to simp for me, Lionel. I will oh, happily nice. accept your simping. You can simp for me. Can we start the mu simp army? <laughs> Tibble, oh, yeah. Tibble, Tibble, Tibble wants for Women, you can simp for oh, me I, instead. Oh, I'm a esteemed member of the society. <laughs> So, um, again, uh, so she is going to pick one of you at random. I'm going to roll a d6 
IRL. And it's going to be from 1 is Laura, 2 is Lyrium, 3 is Lionel, 4 is Benelby, and 5 is Roll, and I'm going to reroll 6s. That is who it's going to be for, um... Wait, when did Jen join? What? I swear to <laughs> Jen's been here. here. My goodness, you guys are all slow. Um, anyways. <laughs> Continue. So she is going to roll. I'm going to roll a dice as her. And she's going to randomly choose one of you that is going to get the information on the weapon you are searching for, even if you don't know it yourself just yet. <laughs> are you guys ready? Listen, I, I just want knowledge. I rolled a six. Knowledge power. Uh, who, who, who? Reroll time, boy. As a one, a two, a three. I believe three was Lionel. Oh. Lionel. Can we make it be someone else? Because it feels like I'm getting a lot of the action in this adventure. If you feel so, you can reject it. They'll say Lionel, and you say, no, 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 not me. My ideals. Knowledge. The path to power. So then we will actually de we will dumb down. It was it was a little random roll, so I couldn't choose it anyways. I'll grab a D4, then I have a D4 in standby. She said, I mean, I didn't take it. I just feel like a lot of, like I'm the leader, etc. And a lot of it's gone to me. I kind of would like other people to be able to do stuff, if okay. that makes sense. We'll take you out, and in fact, she'll say, as you say, don't worry, I don't need anything. She'll say, I'll come back to you in a moment then. So we're going to go down to a D4. Laura's a 1, Illyrium's a 2, Bunelby's a 3, and Roland is a 4. So, as we roll the D4, we get number 2, which is Illyrium. Yay! Illyrium. There's a hammer. A great war hammer. By the name of the Comet Smasher. The Comet Smasher? Oh, the right. Comet Smasher. It's actually oh, where you've come from. It's from the southern desert island. Um, right, I can't give you much there. more clues than that, but it is your destiny-bound weapon, as we call them. Now, I can't tell you much about it, but I'm going to tell you that um, it is potentially soon that you get this. It's potentially not, but you have to search for it a bit. Um, now, Lionel, I see that you've rejected my offer. I'm going to give you an option. Either, since you're so... Courageous, I could tell you where your weapon is, or where two of your comrades' weapons are. Okay, could you repeat that? Sorry, I, I didn't fully process that. So she says, either, since you are so, um, kind of, like, insistent on you don't need it, is that she will, inst she's making you an offer. Either she will tell you now where your weapon is forcefully, or you can choose to have two of your party members know where they are instead. I'll just two of my party members know where they are instead. Listen, listen, I, I, my flaw is that I'm distracted by promise of information. Okay, so then I'm going to roll another d4. Actually, wait. I'm going to cut out threes. Or sorry, I'm going to cut out fours. Reroll on fours, essentially. Laura, Bunny, roll, and that's one, two, three, okay? Got it? We rolled a... a four. <laughs> <laughs> whoever, I guess I'll, I'll say this. Whoever I roll is the person that's not going to be knowing where their weapon is right now, at least. How? It's probably, it's probably gonna be me. I don't know, I'm getting the thought of my I rolled another four. <laughs> what the Just say it's me, since I'm the closest. I rolled a one. Oh, okay, never mind then. <laughs> oh, shit, okay. <laughs> you jinxed it. <laughs> you will know later I'm, at some point. I would have been. To be fair, Frosty, yeah. yours is pretty overpowered. You might. You don't need to know where it is right now. <laughs> okay. Um. It's gonna be the very same. I'm going staff to look at Ben Elby. He says, "Well, I believe Bunny or Ben Elby, you're searching for something known as the Hyperion Flute." In my visions, with my psionic powers, I can see it with, um, a traveling circus group. Um, a man who seems like a circus master is the one who's in possession of it. Fuck. So, so, like, I just, I just left? Are you kidding? I was just <laughs> that. Are you serious? <laughs> and, um, Rolen. You seem to be searching for, um, the booming bow, as it's called. 
And it's, um, well, it's in a city you know all too well. It's in the city of Nuertus. The city you fled from years ago. Dinkover. <laughs> well, that's about all I can tell you for right now. Uh, if you come back to me in the future, I will tell you where the rest of these weapons are as long as I get some compensation along the way. I give you much more than you need to go off of, though. As long as one of you can bring back a weapon, I will see you as very or bring back a weapon as proof and compensation. I will be very, very um, you know, thankful. So now I will give you the information of where the rest of your weapons are. So I see. I I guess is that all you need, or would you guys like to um, stay for a night or two? I'd like to touch your butt. Wait a second. <laughs> uh, what time Wait of day is it? <laughs> it's about n a little bit past noon, maybe like 3 o'clock. Uh, yes, we would like to stay the night. Uh, Explore the town a bit. Ooh. Well, it's not really it's much of a town. town. It's, it's more just like a giant building that there's like there's pods in. There's like pods in that people sleep in, but... um. This is really the, the town right here you're seeing. It's basically like this, but everyone's just standing outside their pods listening to their leader. They kind of go on speaking throughout the day. It's it's the sanctuary oh. from Walking Dead, okay? But she... Um... Lionel, I want you to roll me a... Roll me. Roll me a percentile die. Roll me a d100. Ooh. That's a big number. Okay. Let me roll for someone else to just see if they pick up on something that you don't know about yet. I did not mean to roll. Okay. We're going to go with it then. So Tipple says to, um, to Yui, Yui, um, my leader, I have a proposition. These look like some great warriors, and I think you're peddling them this, and then you're dripping them out some great information. Um, I, would, I have a proposition. For the two of you who don't know what your weapons are, now this is only if Yui approves of it, but I would like to potentially it's duel you. My weapon is knowledge, okay? I... If you can beat me in a duel, each of you, fair and square, I will maybe see if I can persuade Yui, if Yui agrees, of course, that um, to tell you where your weapons are as well. Does this sit well with you, Yui, or is this too far to my bounds as your second hand? And she says, hmm, you do actually put up a good proposition. If they can oh, prove themselves to be very imagine. strong, I might just give it to them. Well, well, not imagine. Which one is Yui again? Yui's the big dragon. Oh, okay. She Wait, says, we have to fight the dragon? No, no, you're going to be fighting oh, Tabal. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Selective hearing all the way. Yeah, each of you will have a, a chance against Tabal. If you win against Tabal, they will tell you where your item is now. You guys have a, a choice to accept this duel with each of you. It would be it separately that you're going to duel him. Uh, wait, all, wait, all. Before I make no. a decision. No, so you, you guys all know where your, your, your items are, right? So you don't count. This is basically an offer being extended to Lionel and Laura specifically. Uh, sign me up. Okay, Laura, you're in. Um, Lionel. Well, I suppose I, sh I can accept. I don't particularly, particularly see a reason not to. Okay, well then. Which of the two of you would like to go first? I know, Mew, you have stuff on your keyboard right now, potentially, so if you don't want to go right now. Yeah. Okay, we'll do Laura first then. Laura, you need to... Actually, the two of you that don't have your stuff out here on the board. Oh. <laughs> it's the two people that don't have their stuff on the board that, that don't have their weapons first. That's why. Okay. Uh... So I'm gonna say Bunny and Lyrium, they move over here to the side. And I don't know where Roland went. Where did Roland go? I I I took mine off. Okay. She's gonna fly back up to her little perch up there. And let me get up uh Tibble's Actually let me take Tibble off and let me replace him with his actual uh Oh my I goodness, his token. actual <laughs> <laughs> and let me get up his, his stats because Tibble has stats. Tibble's 
chunky boy. He says actual, and he just like oversizes him like half of the freaking thing. <laughs> okay, Tibble is a pretty. It's a dragonborn, right? That means it's resistant to fire. Music. Uh, it's a blue dragonborn. Ooh, so it was resistant to. Roll me an intelligence uh, check. You know what? It ends up being like this big. Intelligence <laughs> check. Roll me an intelligence uh, check. Um, okay, so you um, know a little bit about dragonborns, you don't know a lot, but you know that, um, yes, certain dragons are resistant to certain different things, but that depends on the color of their skin. You know that red is fire, but that doesn't necessarily mean that blue is fire, blue is maybe something else. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm gonna use water. Okay, so, I guess... You guys can start the fight. You're going to roll initiative. Whoever rolls higher goes first. Of water course. moves. So initiative. Water. He rolls a ten. He, he, he rolls higher. higher. Okay. Um. Again, let me get that up. Let me move that over there. Cool. So here we go. Tipple is going to open up. He's going to gauge the distance between you two. <clears throat> oh, he's not going to run that. He's just going to gauge it. He's going to see you. How far that distance is. Why is it get oh there we go. Thirty feet exactly. Well, Tibble is gonna be like, well that's perfect. And he opens up his mouth and lets out a large lightning breath. What is your um AC frosty? Thirteen. Thirteen? So actually well it's not really an attack, it's more of a save. So give me a deck save. Ah. Uh. Okay, you pass the deck save, so you, you leap out of the way as this lightning breath come, comes right towards you, and you only take four lightning damage instead of uh, seven. So I guess uh -huh. your AC doesn't really matter there. And that is the end of his turn. Laura, is now your turn. Well, I'm gonna use Ember. So you fire off, a, you know, your, your firebolt at him, and you do um, some damage to him. Um, he's not looking like uh, exactly in good condition, but you do realize that after looking at him that he might be a bit of a higher level than you. So this might be a, a tough fight because he didn't take anywhere near as much damage from that as you thought, or like, you know, ratio-wise damage from that as you thought he would. Now you can move away from him if you want to. Also, you have, you have your movement. He looks more of a melee fighter, I'll say that. Okay, you do have mobile, correct? That's why you're able to move forward. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Cool. God. He's going to see this and be like, well, "What the heck, man?" Um, he is going <laughs> to. Again, you moved forty on top of thirty, so he's gonna actually be taking disadvantage with this, I guess. But he's going to move forward. Actually, no, he won't. Yeah, he'll move forward to about here. And as he's moving forward, he's running a spear. And he's gonna chuck it at you. Actually, he can move forward. A little bit more, so you can move forward to there. Mm. That's not good. So he's throwing a spear at you. Don't pass. A, a nine misses. So the spear lands in the ground next to you, and um, he is now fucking Christ. Weaponless. Right, I'm skelly for a bit. Oh, okay. What? See you in a bit. What? Okay, we're just gonna move you up there because I feel like this might be a battle of, that ends up as you running away from him very often. <laughs> uh, so there is now a spear in the ground next to you. That's his turn. What are you going to do? That's his only spear. Is it a bonus action to take, pick it up and throw uh, it away? I, I say that earlier it was a bonus action because I was just being nice to Bunny. I think... Well, readying a weapon, I'm pretty sure, is just free. So I think you can actually just pick it up, because that would be considered readying it, and then you can just run away with it if you wanted to. Uh -huh. You know, readying it, I think, is free. I think stowing it is what takes the action, if you try to, like, stow it and get out a different weapon. So you'd essentially be picking it up for free, but to put it away so he can't grab it, basically for the rest of the combat, that would be... Yes. That would be would an action. That. So you're, you're going you're gonna to pick up a spear... 
Okay, so now you have a spear in one hand, and I guess your book, your your uh, tome for spellcasting in the other hand. What are you gonna do now? Wait, I can still attack. Uh, I mean that was your bonus action to pick it up. I'm gonna say so. All right, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> so you throw a firebolt at him, and you miss. Oh shit! It is now his turn. Are you gonna move it all? Uh, the uh. uh yeah. Okay, he is going to move towards you his moving speed because he can't really move more than that. So it's going to be either there. Uh, okay. And that is his turn right. because he can't do anything right now. Awesome! My turn! Firebolt! You cast Firebolt at him. Firebolt! Okay, this is going to be a while. <laughs> I didn't move. Uh, wait a second. I'm going to have to move you guys back up because you're not going to have enough room to move. <laughs> okay. You can uncanny dodge everything right here. <laughs> Without actually using uncanny dodge. <laughs> Basically, you're just running instead of uncanny dodge. And here's the thing. Firebolt has 120 feet. Okay, he's gonna so dash. If I keep my distance. To. Oh. oh. <laughs> Not if he does that. <laughs> he's gonna dash to there. I mean, he can't take his action if he does that. So you guys can't see his his little arrow. But again, we're gonna bring you guys back up here into the corner so you have the most room for fighting possible. He's just gonna oh. he's gonna look at you. He's gonna say, "Stop running, coward." Listen, listen. I'm a fucking uh. A wizard, I don't know what you want from me. If I leave, he's gonna get an attack of opportunity. So what are you gonna do? You do have the spells to help you with that? What does this do? A blade song. Um, that's your your blade. Uh, oh your blade wait wait. Actually. So your AC goes up by one at least. Your walking yeah, speed increases he, by ten. He can't be wearing. He can't be wearing any armor. Oh, are you wearing any armor? Nope. Mm. Hmm. Uh, uh, I'm gonna do that and whack. I'm out. <laughs> uh, wait. So, uh, you make me wait. Oh, so you're gonna you're gonna whack him. And then I'm and I leave. It's not gonna hit, and then you're gonna leave. Okay, great. Mm. I'm really. Great. Great. I apologize. I just broke a hundred fifty dollar kit again, and I don't even have my repair shit because I'm out of it. You can't buy more right now because it's not in production. That's a big rip. I'm sorry to hear that. I am not ready to scream. Off. Like I am ready to scream. So I am so endlessly for. I've worked on this thing two months now. Whoever designed this, like. They need fired. <laughs> they need fired, not just anything. He's gonna head over to the crowd here. Alright, I'm gonna fire into the crowd. Hopefully He's I going to child. say, hand me your weapon. <laughs> and oh there's a random person there holding a spear and they say, okay. <laughs> so now he's got a spear. Cool. <laughs> Sir? Did you say spoon? Spear. Oh. I don't know where it's got spoon from, but... It is your turn. I heard all I heard was, and I was like, "Oh God!" <laughs> Throws a flipping spoon, flaming at you. Over here, okay. Okay. Six, five. Eh. Eh. Let's cast that. Yeah, it hits him. We all know this fight's gonna turn out. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is giving um, me a full flashback of, of Coco versus Lonnie here. We all know this is gonna turn out because he can't do anything to you because he's gonna run to there. Wait, uh. Unless he wants to throw his spear. I think that was where he was, right? I had to make sure that was where he was. Yeah, that's where he was, yeah. I think. And he's going to throw his spear at you. Wait. He's gonna miss. Oh. Uh, you want to move us back up again? <laughs> that, that's his turn, I guess. 
You want to move us back up again? <laughs> I'm gonna have to, aren't I? Wait, see, that's the wrong thing. I mean, at this point, he should just four. Well, no, because he's... If you stop... If he stop, if Frosty decides to stop running away, he might have a chance to actually beat Frosty. But the fact is that Frosty keeps on running away. Listen, I, I'm playing this, this game here, okay? He's playing the long game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing the smart game. Okay, so... If you miss... had an extra tech, you could beat him. Okay, he says, he says this. He says, this is not what I meant when I said have a fight. I'm going to make this a little bit more interesting in a second if you don't stop running away. Yui, would you do the honors? You see, Yui flies up into the air and um, she casts Wall of Stone. You can now not pass. Um, This this wall here that's very very flat. Well, so if you run any further than that, you're basically going to be getting in trouble. And that is the. Wait, uh, that doesn't even do anything. Well, no. If 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 Frosty runs there, he runs out of room. Yeah, I have to run four Brazils, basically die. I mean, she could probably get around him because he only he doesn't have a spear or anything, but. So, okay, it is now your turn again, Frosty, because that was his turn. Before you roll. <laughs> oh, I can't use that. Damn, I really have no spells in the first, first level spells that actually are, like, combat-wise. You don't have, like, magic missile or anything? No, I don't. So you're basically stuck with cantrips? Actually, I think magic missile is a third level spell. No, magic missile is a first level spell. Really? Yeah, I don't know what you're on about. Oh, firebolt again. <laughs> oh, wait, let me go look at that. Uh, how did you cast two of them? Oh, wait, that was the one from last turn. Never mind. Yeah, that hits. It does one fire damage. He's really hurting. In fact, I don't think you picked up his last spear, did you? No, I didn't. He's gonna pick up the spear, it's probably about right there. And that's gonna be... He's gonna walk another 15 feet towards you. Eh. Cool. Don't throw your spear. He's not gonna throw it, he's gonna start stabbing you with it once he gets close to you. Okay, that is his turn. Listen, yeah, magic listen. missile is a first level. Listen, listen, I, I can... Is it here? Yeah. Okay, fire fuck You fire a firebolt at him good... and he it just it just misses and he's like That was a good firebolt too. He says, Your time has come, young puny one. Uh oh. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't oh, I didn't realize he had that much movement speed. <laughs> Oh, he is thoroughly fed up with you. <laughs> he takes his spear and oh, with two oh, hands he's going to try to jab it into you. He only gets the eight, so he misses. God, this guy sucks. So is it my turn? It is your turn what now, is yes. It? Is it my turn? Whack. Oh, uh, you miss. I know. But mobile! Eh. Okay, is that your turn? I guess I really don't have to keep track on the initiative tracker, but he's just gonna, um, oopsies. Do that and get right in front of you again. Oh my god. <laughs> and, um, uh... Can I have to take a mobile twice in a row? No. That does hit. You take five piercing damage. I'm down, down to half health. Oof. To be fair, he's not down to half health yet. Because all the fireballs, is. the fireballs you've thrown at him have done like ten overall. What? Okay. This shit. Where he at? <laughs> is it my turn yet? It is your turn. 
Uh, ice beam, go. That hits him. Uh, I can't leave or else he'll get an attack of opportunity. Um, I mean, do you want me to stab if... you again for half health? I mean, you, you have to take the... I, 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 if I stay, I die. If you stay, <laughs> you die. If you go, you die. Um, well, no, wait. How does the mobile work? Is it if you make a melee weapon attack and you miss? It's only if you make a melee weapon. Um, well, here's the thing. You have a bonus action still, right? Uh, yeah. Just use your bonus action with, like, a dagger in your offhand. And... I don't have a dagger. What do you have? You have a spear. A quarter staff and a spear. A spear can be used one-handed. Oh. Well, I don't have a spear in my thing. Well, it's so. a d6, so just roll a, d roll a d20 to see if you hit him. A d20 plus your dex. Actually, that'd be... Yeah, you use your dex mod. 1d20... I mean, technically, Blast. I think this isn't right. You can't do this, but technically, you you can do this. So I'm gonna say just for thematic purposes, yeah. That actually hits them. Roll a d6 plus your dex mod. Uh, nine damage to him, and you get your mobile to work. So that's twenty-five. And goes down to what? I can technically travel here if I want. You could, but I would recommend not doing that because that would make me upset. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. If I want to survive, I must do it. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, you can't. I just don't. I just don't. I mean, go ahead. You're not supposed to, but you can. Whatever it takes for knowledge, man. Whatever it takes for knowledge. Okay. Move board down. <laughs> he says, God damn it, stop running! <laughs> he can't even get up to you anymore. He's gonna get to, like, right there and he's gonna throw his spear at you. <laughs> he misses. Thank fuck. Uh, we're gonna move you down because you can't. Well, I mean, you can't run up anymore. Never mind. There's all there's, there's walls all, along all sides of you, but you were never running this way before, so I only made one at the bottom. I'm not moving you anymore. You can't go any further. Uh, 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 <laughs> ray of frost. As you turn around, you throw a ray of frost at him. That hits him. He's looking pretty bloody at this point. <laughs> oh my gosh. Frosty, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a hint, right? If you run it straight, you get far away from him. But I also take in. You're not running that way. If you run left. Oh wait a minute. Yeah. Oh fuck. <laughs> I mean, he was just the right spot. He could, calculated. He could reach you. Well, wait. Where did you move? Forty or did you move? Uh, I was right here, right? So what's? You were. That's forty-five. I was like right here, so. So that's just you were right here. So never mind. You you moved forty. You can't move any further. Yeah, I moved forty. But he has to grab his spear. Alright, he threw a spear. So he's gonna have to run up to here to grab his spear. And then he's gonna run back towards you. So which th this'll be, um... So, in that top block of the dragon. I'm just gonna move the dragon. But he gets to there. Is he gonna throw his spear again? Uh, you bet. And he's gonna miss yes. again. So his spear's right here. Okay, it's your turn. Eh. Ray of Frost is gonna miss. Uh, yeah. Okay, so from here to here is that, and then, oh, look at that. Goes up there and then dashes to get down to you. Wow, okay. So picks well, up the spear. Guess I'll die. Well, he can't attack you. He, 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 had, to, he had to pick up a spear and then he dashed to get, toward, to get close to you. Oh. Okay, so, uh... 
I'm We've gonna... been going for almost two hours now. You could <laughs> stop using magic and start using fucking weapons. <laughs> he actually did more damage with the spear than he's done with his magic. Like in the one round, he used the spear. How much? Wait, I can still use the spear, right? <laughs> you still can if you want to. I'll use the spear. Spuriously. So do the same thing again. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. Just saying, cantrips I mean, I would just aren't with your really the best away. thing to attack with. Well, he, he doesn't have any... Well, I mean, you don't hit with the spear, but you can you can get away now. Yeah. So I'm gonna... Stop using the whole ability. This, this session has been going for almost two hours now. He's very upset. Hey, are you... <laughs> Am I almost you done? Yeah, with this guy. He's gonna get to there. <laughs> They're like, stop running. He's gonna if throw Tibble his... had freaking spear, barbarian yeah. rage, man. <laughs> there, oh, uh, force piercing I'm down to damage. One HP. <laughs> I'm down to one HP. Uh, so it's my turn? Yep. Yes. My God! Here, so wait, I'll 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 do this for you, just so you you, you know. Can you hit me? I had to scroll, zoom out a little bit for that. There's so much going on. Why are there so many arrows? Yeah. Because I'm trying Jeez. to show Frosty where. He can reach, but someone else is also doing it too. Torchy. Yeah. But also, he threw his spear, so he has to go get his. Well, his spear's so. like right here, so actually, yeah, he has to go like here, and then to wherever you run to. So here, to here. So then he can only get to to here, if you run. Hmm. How are you getting 30? Because he has to go to his spear first. Well, like, how is he getting 30 all the way down there? Okay, I go here. Wait, did I do that right? Okay, so he's going to go... Oh, I went 35! You can go a little bit further than that. I still have an extra feet of movement! Hold on. Get that, I'm going here. So he's gonna pick up a spear and he's gonna go like I think it was right here, right? And Rear Frost has sixty feet. Yep. How far away is he? He was he was way within sixty feet. I'm just moving him preemptively because that's gonna be his turn. Okay, well I'm gonna Yeah. That's gonna hit him and do some damage. He's gonna say, God damn it. Even with these walls, I can't catch up with you. That was his turn to move there. I'm past this boy. He's not gonna throw it again because he's not gonna. Be able to, he knows if he throws it, he knows he's not gonna be able to catch up with you. So he's not gonna throw it. Okay, so I can move again. Yeah, you can move again. Well, if I go there, I'm dumb. I mean, you can go into the crowd too. The crowd's not technically there anymore because you ran away. But I mean, you are pretty dumb. So why not be dumb? I can go into the crowd, you said? The crowd's technically not there. Hey, look, he's in 60 feet. Hmm. It'd be a shame if I just, uh, did that. <laughs> That's gonna miss him. I'm going to smack you. He is going to basically say this. This is the final straw. If I can't hit you Stop. this turn, I'm going to quit because I swear to God, I'm done with this. <laughs> 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 you have literally, even though he added rules that were unfair and made this wall appear out of nowhere, he's still... Listen, I'm desperate for knowledge, okay? He's going to chuck his spear at you, and if it hits... Oh well, if not, it was never meant to be. It hits, I die. <laughs> Wait, he's in the crowd now? 
Yeah. The crowd what? doesn't exist, apparently. Well, wait a second. Here. <laughs> did exactly here. one damage. Yeah, and I had one hit point left. Wait a second here. What's the range? Six. Range of a spear? 60. Let me read something right. fast, because I don't remember the ruling on that. Because that might mean he's at oh. disadvantage, which I think he still hit... Wait, what's your AC, Frosty? 13, so he still hits either way. Ooh. Um, to be fair, I'm going to roll a dice here, because... Oh, come on, just let it be over. <laughs> <laughs> it's only one damage. I'm going to roll a dice here. I'm hearing it's only one damage. Reason, but... I have one damage. What does your blade song do? Because I know you're a blade singer. Uh, I don't have a sword, so it. it um, I know, but. Mm. Oh, it graces me with supernatural speed. Your no. You gain, a, you gain a bonus of your AC equal to your intelligence modifier, minimum of plus one. What's your intelligence modifier? Because you were in blade song. I don't think you might. One of those might not hit My you. Intelligence, intelligence modifier is three. So your AC is actually not. Oh, wait, no. It's your, not... your AC's higher then. No, just let it Which be means <laughs> that minimum. never hit you. Wait, so you're telling me that I had an, an AC of 16? Technically, yes. Oh, and I have 50 walking speed? <laughs> Technically, yes. <laughs> Which means that's going to have been out of its far range, and even if it did hit you, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have hit you because your AC was higher. And because you're forgetting to add that the whole entire fight, you probably have, would have beat him at this point. Shit. Which means Jeez. that, yeah, he, he just concedes. He's like, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes, Jeez, <laughs> he, says, he says, Yui, I, I can't just give it to him. I don't care anymore. Oh, that's not why I was meant to move. <laughs> Bro, we gotta start looking at other people's freaking character sheets before we start. <laughs> well, it's because Frosty didn't know his own abilities. And I remembered something in the back of my head about the Blade Singer. I'm like, don't they get like some sort of AC buff? Why did you have to remember that? <laughs> okay. Bro, in the beginning of the freaking session, hey, you have Blade Slinger. Well, he chose that. I didn't choose that for him. Yeah, I know, but he was like confirming it with him in the beginning. So you were <laughs> basically, Yui says to you, after all that, she says, "Young cowardly one, I am <laughs> most <laughs> upset with your performance here, but nonetheless, the terms laid out by my subordinate were very, Listen, very I'm loose, <laughs> and he technically conceded because you were being such." An annoyance. <laughs> a punk. Okay, well, I have fixed. I am in a better mood as I have fixed my thing. Mute, you're gonna yeah. absolutely steamroll this guy. I'm pretty sure when it comes to your turn. Oh yeah, it is Mew's turn next. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Mister. Uh, can I real an quick hour dump later, the yes. water so I can accidentally dump it on my computer? Can you what? Y yes. I'm gonna go dump my paint water before I accidentally dump it on my okay. computer. I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna yeah, stand next to everyone in the crowd. Well, well, Mew's going to get the paint water this quickly. Kind of nice. I'm going to say... Also, do I steal my HP? Uh, yeah, you're gonna need a long rest here in a second, but she is going to tell you, Lorthana. She's gonna say, Lorthana, you, well, you're a peculiar case. You see, um, you're, you're not one that's searching for one weapon, I can tell you. You're searching for two halves of one whole. Two weapons that make one better one. You're looking for what are known as Cryo and Pyro. They are both short swords, but they are located in different locations. One is the bomb at the Cryo Hydra's Lake, and the other is in the Pyro Hydra's Den. Um, I'm pretty sure you're going to quickly fire out where the Pi the Cryo Hydra's okay. Lake is, but the Pyro Such Hydra's tits. Den is in the dungeon. Now, Lionel, I'd like to see your fight. And maybe if you win, we'll tell you where your weapon is as well. Do I have to wear pants? Haha, <laughs> yes. cantrips go over. <laughs> so, um, he's gonna walk. Tibble's gonna walk over to the crowd, and there's gonna also, be a, a cleric that heals him back up to like full. He's going to get a spear back. I shall give him his other spear back. Should I just run the whole time too? I'm gonna hire walking spear. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, he now has two spears because he's learned. 
<laughs> Lionel's actually going first in this fight. The wall is still there. The wall has actually moved closer now. And, um, are you guys ready? <laughs> Where should I start at? Uh, let's we'll say, uh, 30 feet apart. No, maybe a little bit more than 30. Okay. Um, like there. 35. Okay. 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 My turn. Yes, it is. It's your turn. Time first. to get funky, 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 funky. Let me open up the ball sheet. Monkey, 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 monkey. Lionel, what are you going to lead off with? Looking. Oh face. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, I'm going to. Oh, yeah. 35 base movement speed, so I'm just gonna charge on right up. And, then and I'm what? going to do a couple of things. For my bonus action, I'm going to do a daunting roar. Meow. He's terrified. Wow. Okay, um, you need to make a wisdom saving throw, correct? Correct. What is your, uh, so it's gonna be Okay, so it's to... 8 plus my proficiency bonus, so plus 2, mm -hmm. plus my constitution modifier, which is plus 4. So, 8 plus so eight, 6. 14. 14. He needs to make a wisdom save. Go. He is scared. And then I am going to great axe him. Oh! <laughs> I said you're going to steamroll him. Um, <laughs> and then I'm going to hold up, and I'm going to just, just... I'm going to action surge just to go ahead and hit again. Okay, go ahead and hit again. I ain't taking any risk. That's gonna hit him too. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, Tibble looks immediately just like he's been stomped. He is going to lightning breath in in <laughs> rebuttal. Just he's like ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you need to make a dex save and uh okay so you take the full nine damage. But he right, now has to run, because he technically it can't attack you directly unless it's ranged. So he's going to run back to there. He's going to run basically to the edge. He can't run any further because he's frightened of you. He's trying to get away from, as far away from you as possible. He's going to... I guess he... Can he redo the save to get unfrightened? Uh, until the end of my next turn. Okay, so he's, he's going to be fearful of you until basically the end of this turn. Okay. Cool, it is now your turn then. Yeah. So as you take I'll your great axe to swing to him, you you miss. And he's like, ha ha, you've missed. Maybe you're not so bad. Or maybe you're not so daunting. Uh, yeah, what's your health looking like? I'm just curious. Uh, pretty solid. Oh, he's gonna take a spear. I'm looking like I'm not solid. even at half. He's gonna take a spear and you might be at half in a second. If it hits. What's your, uh, what's your... My AC is 16. So it hits. Just barely. I guess I shouldn't have directly said that, but... Uh, it doesn't Now matter. I'm looking like I'm just under half. Okay. Well, it's your turn. I'm right through my shoulder. I'm like, oh! Mm, not that hard, Daddy. Wait oh a second. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a great person, okay? Okay, is it back to me? It's back to you. I'm going to go... Yeah, he yeet! That's gonna hit him. And he's going to move down from... I actually can't see his health with this. Uh, I'm gonna... Oh, he's he's looking really bloodied. His health Would is you like to concede? I do not wish to harm you in any... He says, I never give up! in a way that you come from. Okay. I take a spear and kind of jam it into you again. That misses. That does not meet my AC. I think this might be the I last think, move. I just spread my legs and goes right underneath my legs. Heck yeah. And then I'm just gonna kind of like, I just swing my great axe, like going from like to the side, down, and going up. Okay. And that's gonna Is miss. Is this a bonus action? Oh yeah, I'm gonna second wind. Okay, cool. So I... So D10 plus your fighter level? Two. So yeah. 1d10 plus 2. <laughs> okay, you're fair. That is fair. <laughs> so... Okay, and he is going to. That would be an eleven. 
Yep. yep. I I'm now looking pretty good. He's going to again take his two-handed spear and try to jab it into you. That's uh, a it has you. to be above or does it have to meet? It has to meet it. It's only two damage anyway. Okay, well then yeah. So I'll your fighter level's worth of health is gone. You're still recovering that yeah. nine health on that turn. Alright. I look down upon him and I say Pretty cute. Come here often. Stab. Uh oh! Oh <laughs> he's he's hanging on! <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's about to fall over. He's like, I never give up. <laughs> he takes his spear and tries to jab it into your stomach again. <laughs> he misses. No. <laughs> I'm gonna just use this one. I'm gonna keep. You, this you just look right. at him. You can just take your hand and like, flick he, him. He's, he's the one who tried to fight me. So like, and come up from the other side. <laughs> 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 so you take your great axe, you come back around from the other side, you just whack his side of his face, he falls over, he's conked out, he's out cold. Hello? Tibble? Tibble? Are you, are you alright? And, and you- Tibble? <laughs> everyone that's sitting in the crowd can see Cross as, uh, Yui's jaw just drops. <laughs> She's like in awe that he's, what just happened and how fast Tibble got wrecked. <laughs> and she said, Lionel, I should have never underestimated you. <laughs> um, don't worry, Roll, and um, some clerics immediately go over to, to Tipple when they help him up. <laughs> oh my god, that was great. Jesus Christ. What's like, how much more health he probably had than me? <laughs> He, he had, had about one a lot hit more point left. Me, and probably higher level. <laughs> I was just... like, I'm holding nothing. I held I nothing just... back. I just accept the fact that my realm was basically a uh, Poco versus Lonnie all over again. Okay, I'll tell you what. He had an, a an AC of 13, and he had 41 hit points. So, so he was, are... on gen generally, thing. stronger than both of you. But I just outran him. <laughs> that was great. See, I don't need to be faster than the weapon. I need to be faster than him. Jesus. Oh, God. That was great. Mews is more like, haha, X go burp. I, mean, I probably would have beat him a long time ago. Mews just went like. Okay. Oh, okay. Speed. To be honest, I you understand. could have. You could have. Freaking got him oh, very well, fast well, yeah, if you did there. not use your freaking cantrips the whole time and just hit him. <laughs> well, the thing was, he didn't have any damaging like spells, so he couldn't really listen, do that. Listen, my quarter staff is on the strength, which it shouldn't be. Or isn't? No, I'm I'm not talking about spells. I'm like literally meaning like, does he have a fork? Does he have a freaking spoon? <laughs> no, I had anything. A but here you are, like, oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my spells the whole time and only do ten damage to the dude. <laughs> okay, listen, 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 listen. See, look at that fireball. Did more. <laughs> fireball obviously did more. Listen. Uh, also, lemon. Listen. Also, lemon. Should my quarter staff be on strength or dexterity? It has to be on strength. You can't do the great axe okay, with a quarter staff with a. I had it right then. Dex. So. All right, time to put some. Uh, um, Yui is going to look at Lionel and say, Lionel, I can't believe I would underestimated you as a, as a warrior. Well, your weapon is a bit different, but nonetheless, I'll tell you where it is, because you've definitely it's earned it. Shot. You are looking for what is known as the Roaring Flame Grape Blade. The destination is Old Destilude. I can't say quite more than that, but I'm sure you're aware that there may or may not be a horde there from previous dragon. Here's a skill. Thank you for the information, kind so Female or male? Can I look at his genitals female. and find out? Uh, it was the very announced that it was a female. Okay, thank you, kind of madame. Dude wanted to look at a female dragon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look. When you're asking that, like, you wouldn't. Well, it's not really. Oh, let me look. It, it's will we freaking proudly pronounced if it is a male or a female. <laughs> well, you guys have 
now um, met the, uh, the scale folk, and uh, you've definitely earned their trust. And you all, I wasn't expecting this, but because of all I know is one action, you actually all know tonight where your legendary or basically destiny-bound weapons are. Which baffles I still me. like how uh, Tibble said I'd never give up, and then he gave up like two minutes earlier. So essentially what was supposed to happen was, <laughs> let me tell you how this was supposed to go down. She was going to randomly select one of you, if um, she could. Everyone got And essentially, it randomly happened to be Lionel, right? Lionel said no, so she said, fine then. I want him to know because I chose him. Which it was random, but still. Then it happened to be that, who got it next? I think Lyrium got it? Yeah. And she was like, no, I want Lionel to know because Lionel was being upstanding about it and putting basically his friends before himself. So she gave Lionel the option He's that... being selfless. That's... He's being selfless. That's illegal. Get him. Essentially that, um... Either him or two of his comrades. And then... It, they both You give me a it. chance to be more selfless. Like, what did y'all think would happen? And then what happened was, was I was like, well, dang. I feel bad for Frosty now. Because... You know, he's kind of getting cheated out of it. And plus, you might be coming up against his the earliest. So. But no, I just made him give up. So essentially, I said, okay, I'll, I'll do this because I don't want them to have to go back and forth a lot more than they have to. And then I was like, okay, if, if Frosty's going to get it, Mew's going to get it too. So what's going to be something that Frosty actually has to work for because of the roll of the dice? But Mew's not going to really have to do too, too much for. So you all got it, but you only one you were supposed to get it tonight. You only know Lyrium is. What? Lyrium. Lyrium. You know everyone's. Yeah, you know what? You know all of them. So Lyrium has the Comet Smash. I was going to actually go down the list alphabetically. The Comet Smasher. The so, smash Penelope has the Hyperion Flute, which is with the Circus. Lorthana has the Cryo and Pyro Twin Short Swords. Um, Why am I always still wielding in these? One's at the bottom of the Cryohydra Lakes, one's at the, in the Pyrohydra's den in the dungeon. Uh, Lionel has the Roaring Flame Great Blade in Old Best Delude. Larium has the Comet Smasher, which is on the Southern Desert Island. And Roland has the Booming Bow, which is in Nuertas. Can I name it the, the Flame Breaker? Because it sounds cooler. The Great Flame Breaker. That's just the generic name of the weapon if you want to give it a nickname or something. The Great Flame Breaker. Okay. Let me just actually put that in my notes. Well, already giving the weapon a nickname before you even wield it. <laughs> it sounds cooler, okay? <laughs> <laughs> just like how, it's just like how at night sometimes you call me different names. We don't discuss this. Are you cheating on me? <laughs> Always. <laughs> just in the background. What the fuck is happening? What's going on? <laughs> So out of character much? <laughs> I don't think it's much out of character. Nah. Gun dragon. I've already determined I am hilarious and you will quote everything I say. I have Oops. already No Pappy. That I am hilarious and you will everything I say. Okay, and so it's sixty nine degrees. Moving it's forward. Degrees. You guys have oh, actually goodness. I'll get your stuff, as I said. Now, how do we want to progress in the session? So, I'm going to assume you're going to be going into the, the... Well, you're going to be leaving in the morning to go, right? Into the... Yes. To yeah. Um, Sorry, I just have a text I'm going to respond to fast. Understandable. Okay, so... You can do as you wish, God. Um, Tipple's gonna tell you that, um, essentially, that in the Frigids, there is something called the Eternal Storm. Right? It would be in your best interest to find what he calls the Lodge, if you want to survive the storm overnight. Um, he's going to say that basically the Lodge is the best way to hide out the, to ride out the storm overnight, but finding the lodge isn't necessarily going to, um, you know, be the easiest thing if you do get caught up in the storm. Are you going to ask him anything about that? So we that, should or? find it beforehand. So what does this lodge look like? 
it, it oh. looks like a, uh, a a nice oak cabin out in the middle of it's just randomly in the middle of the the frigids. If Hold you on, go I got this. generally along the path, you're probably going to run into it. It's a little bit off the path, but close enough that you're probably going to run into it. I want to say something. Like mm -hmm. in the so if we continue frosty, along, or the frosty is coming. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. So if we go along the path, in theory, we should spot the cabin as long as we're paying attention, correct? Uh, no. you're gonna have to keep your, your head, your ears up, your eyes open, but... Generally, it's just along the path. Alright, well... Ears being, as long as we all keep that in mind, let's try and keep an eye out for it. Um, Sounds like we, we, should, we should head out pretty soon and then keep an eye out for that to spend the night in. In the meantime, Bungleby is going to use the restroom in the barracks over there, and I'm actually going to go as well. And then I'll, I'm done I'm done assembling and painting. Uh, sorry, out of character. I'm done assembling and painting, so I can actually take full focus on the campaign now. That is fine. E. Okay. Hog. Cool. So, Hog. I don't know if we're going to get to this tonight, but I'm going to just ask for how long is everyone else able to go, because I... Do have the lodge all planned out, but I can go for the rest of the night. I would know this. I, I just don't want to first. keep everybody up too too long. Number one and number two, I don't want people to lose interest. Listen, Mew probably has work tomorrow. Does he? Yeah. Tomorrow Sunday, dude. Oh, okay, well, every Sunday. You guys have actually covered quite a bit of. The beginning of chapter two, I have in my notes as if it just means session two, but cool. Um, I guess you wait, guys we have. Be... I thought. Wait, hold on. That whole session was a bit of chapter two. Uh, well, yes. I basically how I'm writing it down in my notes is that basically when the end of a session, I have a little bit more than the session should be covering, right? But what happens is after that, I cut it off into chapter three. So basically, what is chapter two this week? I'm I'm almost certain that everything's in my notes right now is not chapter two. But it might end up, a lot of it might still end up being in Chapter 2, especially if you get to the Lodge tonight. I say we should try for it. Yeah, let's try. Because the, the Lodge has a lot of notes, but the Lodge is technically like a mini dungeon. Kinda. It has let's, some yeah, elements Yeah, let's try for dungeon. it. Let's do it. Plus Ultra. Plus Ultra. Okay, let's I'm just to gonna... level up. <laughs> I'm going to rush you guys into the next part of the game then. So I'm going to say the next morning you leave. And um, for a while you're in like this kind of dead area. But Destilude, if I put you guys over on the map, just so you guys can um, kind of get a look. Destilude's like this in-between point between the, um, the snow and the green. Um, basically one side of Destilude has like, it's about a halfway's walk each way to get out from one part into the other part because the wasteland's a very thin strip. So, essentially, if you guys were to leave Desolute in about half a day, you're going to be coming across what is the beginning of the Frigids, which is the cold area of the map. And then most of your journey's over, but this is probably going to be the longest leg of the journey because of the encounters planned. Just saying, this is the point where if you guys are being dumb, and I'm going to emphasize this. If you act dumb, you are going to be killed. It's not too hard. This is why Lyrium herself, for the first, you know, few times when she attempted to get to Kyonghai, had failed because she was alone and she was not prepared enough to take it on herself. Does everyone now, understand that? Strength of 20. And I am ready. Torchy, come on. Power of friendship. The power, power of friendship compels you. So, I have the power of God and anime on my side. <gasps> so far, everyone who's taken damage or expelled sp expended spell slots will get them restored. Oh, well, I already did that, so... Does that mean I get my rages back? Yes, you get your rages back. Frosty, you get your blade songs back. You have, I think... Your blade songs are equal to your proficiency bonus, I'm pretty sure, which means you get two blade songs, I'm pretty sure, at level two. E. Okay. How many rages do I have? Okay. Uh, you should have two rages at level two. At, okay. I think, level five, I want to say you get three rages, but I'm not quite sure about that. Let me grab the PHB fast. 
Uh, I know you get more at a really early level. You get one more at an earlier level, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. We are continuing okay, so the campaign. Can I have a, can I have a quick uh, freshman of where we are? Um, yes, give me sir. a moment. At level 3, you actually get a third rage. At level 6, you get a fourth rage. At 12, you get a fifth. And at 17, you get a sixth. And then at level 20, you have unlimited rages. Okay, okay so... Where we are is essentially that uh, I basically give the group a warning that if you act dumb from this point forward, you're likely going to get killed. This is basically the point where, yes, Liam herself could not go much further. So, essentially, yes, there are more of you, but that does not mean if you don't act stupid, you won't die. Just don't act stupid, act you don't smart, die. smart, everyone. Think on your toes. A lot of the monsters no, here, Lyrium could not get past by herself. With friends of a lower, of the same similar level, it might be a little bit easier, but not much, much easier than it was before. I'm not gonna have a problem with being dumb. So essentially, don't be dumb. You don't die. Think smartly and basically wage your battles. So in other words, do what I did with that. Sure, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. Wage your first... battles. If you don't think you can win, don't engage the monster. If there is a monster, that's the best way I could put it. Got it? Yee. Okay, that's the best way to put oh, it. Oh god! So, you're going to enter into the frigids, basically. It takes about half a day to get there, into the frigids, because like I said. It took about half a day to get to Desolute. Desolute's a very thin strip of, uh, of land. And I don't have snow, so we're going to be using ice instead, which is about the same thing. So, here we are in, in the frigids. And right as you're on the border into the frigids, I'm gonna say you're coming from this corner down here. The path kind of disappears a little bit in the frigids. There's still a rough path, but the path itself is mostly um, it's mostly gone. I'll just say that the path roughly goes along like that. I mean, I know that's terrible, but it's the best we can do here. Now, as you enter. The frigids. If everyone likes to put their tokens down in the corner down here. Give me a second. As, as soon as everyone's able to. Thank you. That second. <laughs> Can anyone else put down their tokens or no? Uh, I'm gonna put down mine. Okay, I'm back. Oh, I didn't even know that Adam left. Yeah, uh, you're following the path, you've basically just entered the frigids. Oh. Did Adam hear basically the speech of, don't be, don't be stupid, don't die? Were he, was he here for any of that? I already well, we know, know about that. I heard that you should know that already. Basically, don't be stupid if the monster is stronger than it looks like you can take on, don't take it on. <clears throat> What's going on? We're fighting. Okay. Um, uh, we're just going through. Both Lionel and um, Benelby need to drag out their characters still. I mean, I can drag them out, but when I drag them out, you guys can't use them. Which we need them to be able to. The black line here is the general path. So we're in a cold area, right? <clears throat> yes, you are. Yeah. So this is more of like an ice texture on the ground here, but it's meant to emulate frost or snow and stuff. Okay. Hey, so I can use my ray of frost and actually damage. Uh, maybe not. Well, I didn't think about that. Oh, okay. You need a better path, or no? You don't need to make a path. <laughs> That's just the general path. <laughs> now, now that you guys know where it is, it's going bye bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but as you guys are heading along the path, it's not very very long until you start encountering why the, the frigids are so <laughs> inhospitable. As you see a young little monster kind of appear in front of you. It looks mm. kind of young. It looks kind of cute. It looks kind of dangerous, though, too. Instead of rumor has, can I touch its butt? Uh, if Three you... times the size of me? Uh... Want to try to touch its butt, you can. But I would recommend not touching its butt. For that would be... Can I touch your butt? I would Heck recommend yeah. not touching my butt. That would be not nice. How would it be not nice? I don't like my butt touched. I mean, it's not, uh, not true. Jeez, <laughs> Louise. Okay. Consent is cute. Um. So, who? Trump doesn't think so. I mean, what? Who would like to try to figure out what that is? <laughs> okay. 
caught me off guard with that one. <laughs> so did I mean? Never mind. I'm not. <laughs> wait, wait, I remember that thing. <laughs> Let's not engage it. No, 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 no. I think we're just gonna engage. I'm kidding. Falling with smart people here, which is obviously me. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so sh are we to the point where we need to roll initiative, or are we still where we can attempt to go around? You are kind of obscured by the snow. Like, a bit. can it see us? You're obscured okay. by the snow just enough that there's like enough snow on your clothes and stuff at this point that it doesn't. It can't distinguish you from the snow, but if you get any closer, you probably will. The only reason why you were able to see it is because of the red glowing on its back. Hey guys, that thing is pretty big. It doesn't look like it's a full adult of its, adult of its caliber, but I believe that thing may try to attack us if we get too close. Do you suggest we confront it head on and attack? By the way, do we get to rest before we head out? We did take we a rest, straight yes. After the fight. Okay, cool. Um... Do you think we should try and confront it, or do you think we should try and sneak around it? I would probably recommend sneaking around it. Avoiding confrontation is always for the best. But also, the more the more we the more we fight, the stronger we will get. I say we take a vote. I agree with the. Okay, well then I'm gonna let everybody vote. Well, what does the lion say? Lionel basically said that you're gonna have a vote if you want to fight it or not. If the group does vote to fight it, fight it overall, though, you're you're all gonna be fighting it. You don't really have a say, or else yeah, half your group's gonna get killed. I say go around. I also say go around. That's two for go around. Uh, three, technically. Who is three? You know, but he's on both sides. I'm on both sides. Oh well. Ah, my dice. I just have some you dice know, sitting here on my desk in case I need to use them. Um, I've stabbed a lot, so I'll say we can go around. Okay, I've, so... I've gotten enough of my stabbing. That's yeah. four out of five say go around, and Lyrium, I think, was the only one that said fight, right? I don't know. I'm confused here. Okay, well, if you don't choose to fight it, you can go around it. You're just going to have to give me a stealth check. All of these. Each right, of you well, individually are going to get, need to give me a stealth check. All of us? Or I guess. Yes. Guess okay. Those are two successes right there. That's a success. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Um, I, that doesn't look good. So, uh, who else needs You don't look good. I'm, I'm down by one, I think. Laura needs to give me a stealth do. check. Stealth, yeah. Yeah! Oh, so. <laughs> so. Loretta these... just fucking, like, drops the sword and makes him, like, onto another bed logic. So these two like, I don't care. We're three fine in the front are thing. moving, right? They're moving, they're doing fine, right? You know, they're going back here, but these two in the back, right? These two. Bunny makes one slight mistake as he gets to, like, here, like, some snow crunches just too loudly underneath his foot. Right? And then Laura, in response to that, being scared that it might have hurt us was like just a little like you know like it makes a little gasp and then that gasp is just loud enough that it does hear you guys i go uh, all right and i take out my axe and i then cue battle music uh yes yeah, sadly our <laughs> viewers cannot hear because i don't want to get you know strikes and stuff but uh i'm using zelda music y'all don't need this I, I, I just don't have it on. Everyone else can listen to it though if they like to. Okay, everyone roll initiative. Yay! <laughs> Torches, Torches, yay, just goes. Wait. Did it not? <laughs> I roll twice, don't yeah. you? Did it not count mine? You won. Uh, you need to click on your character and then click. The oh, yeah, the okay, way. that's why. Alright, me, we're not going to roll twice on accident. Uh, your, further, your first one was higher, so I'll give you your first one. Your first one was a 15, correct? Yes. Yeah. So I'll give you that Ooh, one. It makes you just a little bit better. Be really good for initiatives this time around. I only see a 15 there. Huh? Oh, wait, Frosty's. Was yours also a 15? And you clicked it twice? Yeah, my mouse just likes to click twice. Okay, um, descending order. Okay, cool. So it's actually Roland's turn first. So Roland, let's get Roland right on into that combat. Okay, let's see here. We're going to... I don't know why I always ping, like, when I'm picking up my chip, but, okay. 
Uh, if you hold it down for too long, that's what it will do. No, like, I, I literally just click it and it, it just goes, Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I am going to... Do I'm gonna do this maneuver? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm maneuver. I'm gonna show you what my maneuver is. So here, and then to here, will be how I'm going to end. So I'm gonna go here, and then I'm gonna go here. I didn't see anything that you're 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 doing. Right okay, here. I'm gonna go here. Okay. And then, I will go here, afterwards. My roll 20 must be lagging, so I'm not sure where you're going afterwards. Did you, did you just move to the left more? Is that what you did? Do, do you see what I did from here oh, okay. to here? Why did you move forward and then backwards? So I'll, I'll go here, but then I'll go right here. After oh, I... Okay. Uh, so I'm going here, I'm going to attack, and then I'm going to move over. I get it now, okay. Okay. So. From there... From before I went Why does it do this? to there... How are we doing that? Okay, so you're going to shoot at it, and that's going to hit. It's going to sink on in. It's going to let a little bit of a small screech. It's not as long as I was very enthused by that. But it did do some damage. Okay, it's its turn. Uh, you being the one that aggroed it, not really the noise that Laura made. Oh, wait, shoot, I accidentally skipped past it. We're going to go right back to it. It is going to run up to Tayu. With his 30 feet of movement speed. He's going to get up to there. And it is going to bite you. Oh, that is not his bite, is it? I think I give it... It has the wrong... I think it still has the the strong one's bite. Let me let me check. If, what do you mean? I don't see anything. I see my longbow. <laughs> um, I, I look at my longbow. I'm like, holy crap. I think I accidentally forgot to change its, its bite, and if not, I grossly overestimated the amount of damage you could do in one turn. Swear on dicks. R comes before S. Where is it? I'd like to point out the two people that are supposed to be going first. No, okay, it just does that much damage. Okay, I didn't think it did that much damage, but... Is it gonna bite? It might miss though. Eleven misses. Oh, yes. Like I said, guys, be careful because that would have done a lot of damage. Oh, that would have done more than half my health. That would have killed me. What are you talking about? <laughs> that took me down to four, and I've been like, ah. More than half your health. That would have killed me. Now we're rolling into distraction. You guys should run. Exactly. Thanks, Roland. I'll pay you later. Or maybe. maybe. Actually, not. realistically, what should happen is Laura should be the distraction because she can do the 50 feet of movement speed and I can't run anywhere near as fast as she can. Yo, Laura, go, go be a distraction. Okay. It's Bonnaby's turn, so I can't really... Yeah, it's Bonnaby's turn. What can I do? Uh, you can try to attack it. Or you, um, or you can run, or you can do both. <laughs> I can do both. So How your so? movement speed and your attacks are separate, right? So in D and D combat, you're still new to this. I'm gonna give you a little bit of lowdown. You have three things you can do into combat. You have your action, which is your normally your, your attack. Your bonus mm -hmm. action, which is something really small you can do in combat. Like uh, I'm gonna say, for example, I think this isn't technically an official rule, but in my games I allow it. Drinking a healing potion in the middle of combat will be a uh, bonus action. Um, there's some smaller other little things. Some some attacks or some spells only take a bonus action. Uh, some abilities you like your bardic inspiration. Use some of your. I'm pretty sure that's a bonus. Use some action. of your movement in the attack. And then, then you have your use movement. Use the rest of it to get away. Is uh, you have 30 feet normally, unless you have your special race. Your special race might give you something else. Or if you just drink like a potion of speed or a boost of, boost of speed, something gives you a little bit of extra speed. But normally you only have 30 feet of movement speed. Or if you dash, which takes an action to do, which you take your movement Wait. speed and double it. But anyway, you get you get 30 feet of movement on top of your action and your bonus action that you could do. feet so I don't really have anything like long range do I uh your spells your spell my spells are long range 
Some of them are. Some of them, you know, I don't think you need to touch them. Most of your spells being a bard. I'm, looking, I'm not sure what your spells are, though, off the top of my head. So let me check. So Vicious Small Kree, you don't have to touch for. That's the does some damage. Thunder Wave, you kind of need to be really close for it to work. And the rest of your spells really don't do... Um, uh, I think Fairy Fire might do damage. Let me read that quickly. Uh, no, never mind. It doesn't, but still. Uh, so yeah, you can use Vicious Mockery. It's only a cantrip. So Vicious Mockery, um... You could say, yeah, fuck you, it's bitch. It's an action. Yeah, you basically you say something mean to it, and then it takes damage. But that range is 60 feet, and they're exactly 60 feet away. Yeah, yeah so you, you could say that, and it'll work. Yeah, as long as it's within range. But it... it, it okay. I mean... So what are you gonna say to it? What, what are you, how are you gonna make it feel bad about itself? You know... You, you bug me. You, you, it looks like you woke up on the wrong side of the bed. You looking fucking ugly today. <laughs> it's not like uh, that. Okay, so... Vicious Mockery, I believe, on your sheet. Let me check. Is it there? Yeah, it is. So, okay. So, where it says Vicious Mockery underneath your attacks. Click on the words Vicious Mockery. Okay, so it needs to make a... DC 12 wisdom saving throw, or take two psychic damage wisdom saving throw. It made an 11, which means I think it takes half. Or no, it takes full. If, I think if it passed, it would have taken half. Anyways, it's taken two damage. It really did not like that. It feels very depressed now. You've launched this poor Remmer Haas into a depression. It's in its young, volatile teenage years, and you just send it on a path spiraling downwards in its life. Laura. It's <laughs> joined the rest of us. <laughs> okay, uh... You can only go that far if you activate your blade song, by the way. If not, you can only go 40. Okay, hold on, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm gonna go right here, and just, uh... Nyeh! What was that? A ray of frost. Bop, boop, nothing happens. It misses. Oh, shit. You hit the snow next to it, though. It looks a little, you know, upset about that. Why now? Did he just go? Oh, it's me? Yeah. There they go. Someone just got up and right. said they need to take a break for a second, so I forget who it was. Bunny, probably. Bunny just said, be right back, okay. so. Alright. How far can I go? You can go, I think you have 35, so I think you can go 70 if you want to, if you're just going to give up on this fight. <laughs> Jeez. So wait, how's it been looking so far? Because I'll be honest, I did get up a little bit again uh, while it was other people's turns. So, um, I'm gonna tell you, it was hit twice. One with a vicious mockery that did a little bit of damage, and one with a uh, bow. With a bow. Um, it's not looking amazing, but it's looking like uh, it's it's pretty much still good. <laughs> Looks like right. it just you know got burnt I'm and go hit by an arrow. it. <laughs> And I am going to just kind of So as you launch your great axe at it, right? You barely miss. But as you're, you basically miss, like you, you bring your head a little bit forward towards it, you feel like an immense heat. Like if you attack this thing, maybe that is, you know, its, it's body will naturally react and hit back, kind of. So what you're saying is we shouldn't. Oh, wait, you do hit, actually. Sorry, because you had a 15. <laughs> and you have advantage. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, actually, you're doing... I was about to today. say, what the heck is the freaking DC on this thing? <laughs> and never mind, you feel that its body is attacking back. Uh, Don't know if that's good or bad. Um. <laughs> I need to actually do that. You're taking six damage. Fire damage. No dexterity save or anything like that. Uh, nope, you, you just take it. Oh, at least I did more damage than that. And then I have that resistance to fire. Yep. Okay. Um, oh. God damn it, my dice. Where the hell did that one oh, go? Okay. It is now. You need a dice bowl. Lyrium. I'm holding them in my hand. I don't have a dice tray. I'm sorry. I'm poor. Oh, it's a. 
Well, you go in and you go for the, the right, you go into rage and you run on in there. And actually, yes, you do hit it because of the advantage rules I set out before the fights in this campaign, which gives you a 13 damage that you deal to it, bring it down to an astonishingly lower number than it was at. I believe that's correct math. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's right, I believe. Okay. Anyway, that does damage. And again, you feel some, some fire um, coming towards you. You take six fire damage. Alright, so 30 minus 6. Three. Okay. Roll long. How long is one minute, by the way? What's, how long is what? How long is one minute in Dungeons? Uh, one, so like in rounds? Yeah. Ten kinda. rounds. One minute is a round. No, one minute is ten rounds. One round oh. is six seconds. Oh. Uh, why do I have to spend so basically an entire fight. <laughs> yeah, Adam, let's be honest. Your movement speed is 30 feet, right? If it takes you ten minutes to move thirty, or if it takes you a minute to run thirty feet, that that'd be a problem. Would it be though? Okay. Anyways, uh, I know I'm very close. So what? Are you though? So, are you dude, I'm right up on it. You're um, what? It would not be good for me. To, it would not be good for me to do that. Um, I'm coming though. Yeah, cause that's no, that's no. So I'm going to have to. Mew, do you see a problem in coming? I really don't. I'm going to have to stab. So as you lunge your forward, your sword forwardly into it, you do some damage. You're gonna do just a little bit of damage to it, not too, too much, not, not nothing to scoff at either. And again, you're gonna feel some fire coming back out at you. Take four fire damage. You just basically did a nice little trade of damage on on yourself. Cool, Leo. Is that what you're gonna do this turn, or are you gonna try to move away or anything fancy? Uh, that's that's what I'm gonna do for this turn right now. Okay. The Remor has his turn. Um, this is where it's gonna hurt. Who did the most damage to it? I believe. I want to think it was Lyrium. Yeah, I think Lyrium did the most damage to it. Just by a little bit. So it's actually going to bite at Lyrium. It's going to barely miss. But it would have done nasty damage if it hit Lyrium. I think it would actually take Lyrium down. Yeah, it would have. Okay, Benelby, it's your turn. Heck yeah. I have no idea what to do. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! I'm here for support! Actually, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something here, right? So there's something in Dungeons & Dragons called Attack of Opportunity. Right? Now, this might seem counterintuitive, but when you hit something away from you, if you force it away, basically, if it moves, you get an Attack of Opportunity on it. Now, they might take a little bit of damage from doing this, but if you position yourself just correctly, let's just say you go maybe here, do a thunder wave, it's going to hit him and push him 10 feet away. Well, look at that. 10 feet away is, was that an extra how much further? And then Torch, you're going to get Attack of Opportunity on it. You can do a little bit more damage on it, plus whatever you do with your thunder wave. That's just an idea, though. I'm not saying you have to do it, but it might be helpful. Can I even go that far? Uh, probably not in this turn, but you can at least set it up, and on your way over there, you can do, like, a vicious mockery or something. Heck yeah. Sounds like a plan. Can that someone, might. can someone mark that for me right there? Uh, yes, I will ping it for you. Thank you. We have a rainbow oh. going on here. Thank you. And then I'm gonna go vicious mockery. Oh my goodness, you look so goddamn ugly. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, it needs to make only, a wisdom it's, save. It's only slightly more attractive than me. But I do have a question. It's gonna fail. It's gonna take four damage. It feels very, very depressed. You want this poor creature into a depression that it will, it will never recover from it. Let's be honest here. Yeah, what's your question, Lyrium? The bite it did. Who was it towards? It was towards you, but it missed. Okay, so if I was at full health, then it shot me. That's why I said, be careful, guys. Choose your fights wisely, because if it's hit you, it could have killed you. We tried to get away from this. Okay, to be fair, you <laughs> did, yes. Oh, oh. Is it my turn now? 
thing alone. Yes, no but to be fair, I did lay out an option where you all could have got away Fire fine bolt. if Lorthana basically took the bit the bullet and acted as a decoy for a little bit. Yeah, no one actually listened to that plan. But Firebolt does nothing. I quit. Uh, yeah, so you fire thing Firebolt is, at it? You did not. You did not clarify that we could have still kept on trying to get away from it. I, I actually so it was automatically assumed. That's why I said you could try to. You could basically use Lorathon as the decoy and get away. But no yeah, one after to we have already started. No, fighting that, it. that was way before you guys started fighting it. Listen, well, actually, right for the first check. Could have taken advantage of that long. Anyways, Lorathon, I'm gonna give you roll an intelligence check as you fire off this fireball. Firebolt. Firebolt. Sorry. Um, so, you see there's fire on his back, and you see your, every time your, your allies attack it, fire comes off of it. You get the idea that attacking it with fire might not be the best idea. Oh, shit, okay. Okay, Lionel. Well, Let's say it. <laughs> hey, mister. <laughs> Alright. How's it looking? God, you also did the fire. It's looking voice. about half health, I'll say that much. Maybe a little bit better All than that. Alright. Oh, I think it's about time. Uh, I am going to... This would be a bit of a thing. First off, I'm going to do a big ol' slash. It's slicing and hit. dicing time. Um, now it's looking basically half health. Um, is that all you're going to do in this turn? No. I am going to use my action surge to slash it again. That's going to hit and do even more damage. Now, by doing that, you've unleashed a multitude of fire damages on yourself. Now, so basically two five damages? Uh, yeah, you're doing. You're going to get two rounds of it, essentially, which I'm going to do it all at once. But are you ready? All right. Does it have to be at the end of the turn or just after it gets hit? After it gets hit. All right. Do it. Do it. Okay, it's not terrible, it's not great either. You take 12 fire damage. And then I'm gonna second win. <laughs> uh, that killed you? No, it didn't kill me. I'm just second winning. Well, it's gonna, it was probably pretty close. Oh, Ooh, only, that's not very good. You only recover in five from that. I'm alive, though, when I did some decent damage. Okay. <laughs> Alright, Lyrium, it's uh, up to you. Lyrium, uh... <laughs> it, it's you looking... I'm gonna say now. it's looking at about uh, third health. Do it. Smash it. That's gonna hit it, and it's gonna do ten more damage to it. It's looking really beat up at this point. Maybe it's not looking like you know it's uh you know gonna die in the next round or two. But give me that damage, chief. Why is it not going through? Will he die though? Did it go through on this side? Oh my! I think my roll twenty just decided it wants to kill itself. Forty six. Or is that a uh, I might need to re-roll my, re my roll 20 for a second here, I'll be right back. Because roll uh, 20 acting is stupid. Um, right. okay, I can do it on the- I have two things going up here. Why were the 2d6 for? For your, your damage? I'm guessing. Yes, okay, yeah, you rolled- you get- you take 9 fire damage, thank you. Yay, 9 more damage. Um, so. and this is why I said be careful, because if things don't go your way, you might get hurt a lot. I don't know why Lorantha's character she just opened up to me and I opened to up to go get away. <laughs> I gave you an option to get away. Just no one followed it after I said it, so. Exactly we're in Look, I'm not smart, okay? None of us are smart. Okay. Now, I believe Lorium. Where are they? Uh, okay, I need to scroll all the way back down. Okay, cool. Roland's turn. Roland. Yeah, let's get right, Roland right into combat. What will my boy Roland do? I am going to... Everyone turn into the Spilling Wheel of Death. That's interesting. Um... Ah! I am going to... I'm gonna stab it again. Okay, you stab it, so you take your sword, yeah. 
<laughs> you stab you plunge your sword into it. Yes, yes, Lord Thana, yes. I would I would agree with that. Take some damage and it's gonna throw some fire back out at you. And you're gonna take seven fire damage. Now, as you guys realize, you're probably getting a little low. But if you can survive this barrage of whoever gets bitten here, you might be able to beat it in this turn. So, it's going to weigh its options. Who's done the most damage in the past turn? I'm pretty sure it's Lionel. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a bite. because it's, it's giving everyone else attempted biting. What's your AC before I, I hit this? Because this might just determine the outcome of the fight. Let's see what it does. It misses yeah. completely, and that was even a terrible roll, so you probably still would have been in the fight after that. Coolio, that's his turn. It can't do anything else. Okay. Wait, still in rage? Uh, you are still in rage, yes. Bunny, it's your turn. Bunnelby's oh. turn. Heck yeah. Okay. So, I can... I can go <laughs> right here. Uh... Yeah, uh, you want to go up, maybe, so, because it's, everything is in 10 feet, so yeah, like, there would, would work. Okay. Because you don't want to hit, uh, Lyrium or Lionel, so you have to be in just the right position that, um, be, like, right here. <coughs> so, now, then you cast thund Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave. Cast at what level, two? Oh, uh, you can't cast it at level two. He doesn't. You can only cast it at level one. He's not level. If he's level three, he could do it level two. So, uh, we don't we don't count that 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 one there because that's higher level cast. But you do twelve damage to it, as long as it can make the con save. If not, it takes six damage. I'm pretty sure and gets pushed. Oh, it makes the save. He barely made it. Barely made it, but still taking the six damage. Okay, your attempt at least was worthwhile. Take some damage, and if it failed the save, it would have been pushed 10 feet away. That might not actually be the right spot, because it's a 15-foot cube. So let me see. Um, that's 15 feet. That's 15 feet. So you actually be uh, here, because that would still be within 15 feet. But they would be within 20 feet. Yeah, okay, cool. Hmm. Just, oh yeah, I keep on forgetting that you guys can't see my thing over there. That's 15, 20, 20, 20, 20. Uh, Ray of Frost. So, as you fire off a Ray of Frost at it, and you hit it, and you do so much damage to it, you feel like, and you realize, even though you crit on it, <laughs> the, the Ray of Frost, just, as it hits the skin, it just kind of dissipates and just turns to nothingness. So it's resistant to both of my combats, but... All right, it might be more than resistant to both of them. I feel new because he just said it bounced off of I swear, if you've been feeding this freaking monster this whole time, I will be, uh, I'll be getting with your lawyer. And, uh, telling him to quit and then, uh, take you to court. <laughs> Lionel, what's your turn? How's it going? <laughs> uh, I'm feeling pretty solid and I'm just gonna... Kind of jump up slightly and just smash my axe into its skull as best I can. So as you go actually to jump up, you do have the advantage, so you can slash your axe into its skull. Oof! That does a ton of damage. It's hanging on by a thread, by a thread but in its last dying breath, it's going to leave out that 2d6, and you're taking 7 fire damage. And I'm dead. Just kidding. I'm actually not. Okay, Lyrium! Let's see if you can finish it off. I might be able might die in the process. Let's go, bitch. <laughs> so you take up your, your great axe, right? And you're going to swing it into its side, and you, bam, you hit that thing so hard, it falls over dead. You do just enough damage to it to bring it to negative 10. It was sitting at one hit point. It is now dead. D-E-D, -E dead. Whack, 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 uh, I need whack, to whack. add a, a thing to it. it uh, every time you hit it, you will take a 2d6 of fire damage, Frosty, so... Uh, Keep that in mind. No. Oh, yeah. by the way, yeah, Frost, it's torture. You're gonna take some fire damage right at the end as it dies. Take seven fire damage. Right, and I'm half of what I was last at. Okay, so you were at 14 then. So you guys now realize that after the DM gave you countless warnings, which. But you now you know the severity that these monsters can easily kill you. So, 
But there's an upside to this that you guys have not yet experienced. Well, I mean, you experienced it once in this campaign, but you guys will be leveling up. Now, here is the, uh, the thing. I don't know if you guys want to level up mid-session or if you just rather end the session here and level up after the session. I'm going to give you guys that choice because leveling up does take a while sometimes. I'm not hearing a yes or a no know. to anything. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so at level three, everyone's going to choose their subclass. Or not everyone except for uh, Frosty, I believe, is going to choose their subclass. I already got my subclass, yeah. so. So we have, yeah. Adam is going Ranger. Mew is going. He's a fighter, so I'm not sure where he's going. He can go any fighter subclass. Bunny's a bard. He's never done this before. I think just so we don't slow down the session beyond belief. And Torchy's also a barbarian, so he's also going to be getting his subclass here. I think so we don't slow down everything beyond belief, and this is kind of late for me. I think we're going to end the session here. I'm going to help everyone level up off camera. It's been about three hours, so it's a good length session. And then next session, you guys will be getting into some real fun stuff. And plus, you guys will be You're cool help stuff. digging for next session. So, that'll be perfect. And I won't have to worry about too, too much about how squishy you guys are. So, I think we're going to end it here for this session, guys. Until next time, good day, best out, and bye. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Like, subscribe down below. Do all that fun stuff. Hit the bell. And, uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Bye. Hashtag same for Lionel. Bye.